Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Today's stream is going to be hot. Very, very hot. As you're coming to the stream, let me know where you're watching us from and like the stream as you're coming in. I would love to know who's in the stream and where you're watching us from. I see a number of people in the stream. Some of you are already here even before we started the stream. So that means the stream is definitely hot because people have already started discussing on this topic before we even started going live. Like the stream as you're coming in. I'm so interested to know where exactly you are watching me from. Let me know where you are watching me from and let's give it a minute so that people can get notification and join us live. So this stream, today's stream is actually inspired from a question that one person that somebody asked me, oh, sorry. Today's stream is inspired by a question that somebody asked me last time I was doing a live stream towards the end of it. Um, Razi, to be specific, uh, the second last stream, in the second last stream, Razi asked me, why is it that Africans hate African-Americans I know if you've been on my stream so long, for so long, if you've been on my stream, you obviously know my, my stand on this issue. So I'm just waiting for you to come in. We already have 35 people in the stream. So we have a number of guests. I can see two guests or two people who will be discussing or who will be taking on this issue. They are back, are backstage. They'll be joining us live briefly, but just comment and let me know where you're watching us from. 41 people in the stream already. New York, Bosu Girls, how are you doing? Happy to see you. Ellie, Sherry, Kelly, proud African-American. PG, how are you doing? Sylvester, Jerome, how are you doing? Uh, Musa, Sarah, Michael, I see you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining the stream. I hope you like the stream as you are coming in. Let me also share out the stream so we can have more people participating in this. So in the meantime, let me know where you're watching me from. As I'm also sharing out the stream. We have 46 people in the stream. I hope our likes reflect that. We only have 25 likes. I mean, we can do better. We can do better that. David, Abra, Ahmed, uh, given fact, big fiction, Sylvester. Um, I'm sharing the link to the stream so that I can also have more people participating in this. And I hope Razi, I'm not very sure if Razi is in the stream already, but Razi, I would also love you to come on because you are the one who suggested this. T. Kelly, how are you doing? Carice from Auckland, PG. Okay. So let's get to start discussing this topic. I will invite our, uh, uh, my first guest as we are going to have more guests uh, joining us. Hi, hello, Jeff, how are you doing? Hello. I'm good, African tribe dress. Um, I'm doing well. Right. Hello, I'm doing well. Okay, maybe you can introduce yourself and where you are from. Okay, my name is Chepchirchir Teriki Chemweno. I'm from Iten in Elgeo Marakwet mm -hmm. County in Kenya. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm currently in Iten. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really it. Oh, yeah, and the reason why I'm really interested about, like, being, talking about the issue of, if, like, why do Africans hate African Americans? I think it's because okay, I'm um, I'm Kenyan, I'm African, and mm -hmm. I've gone to the U.S. and I've stayed there for five years, and yeah, and I think I can I I've I've always been in I've, I've always been interested in this topic, so yeah, it's it's something that I can really add something I know and yeah, and also listen from this conversation. All right. All right, thank you, Jeff. I hope, is it Jeff or Chep? Yep. How do I pronounce your name correctly? Is it Jeff or Chep? 
Uh, so it's written Jeff, but as a Kalenjin, you pronounce it as Jeff. Okay, okay, thank you, Jeff. You have to pronounce it as Jeff. Okay, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, our second guest, Sheku. Hello. Yeah, hello, Marilyn. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> My name is Sheku Gadwin Kamara. I'm from Sierra Leone, but I'm currently based in Russia. All right. And why are you interested in discussing this topic? Um, because I've seen a lot of discrimination between blacks and blacks all over the world, especially America as a whole, where they have the uh, great amount of black people around the world. So like, I've seen this discrimination, so like, I need to talk about it. So that's why I tell you I'm interested in this topic. All right. Let's introduce our third guest. Jamal, hello. Hello, how you doing? Good. Maybe you can introduce yourself and why you uh, are interested in this topic. Okay, my name is Jamal. I am an African American, but I prefer to just call myself African. Um, I live in Ohio. I've been to Africa a couple of times. I've also been to other black nations, such as Jamaica and also Haiti. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm interested in the con I'm interested in the discussion mainly to dispel a lot of myths, a lot of stigma in the divide that we're currently having. Okay, okay. All right. So I see you all. If you have those questions that you have, because on this panel today we have Africans, and uh, so far the ones who have joined us, they are yeah. Africans lived abroad at some point or uh, been to live in the u.s and we also have african americans who've actually visited africa this is going to be a very interesting topic i don't know how things will go from here it's a tough you know it's a tough topic and like i said like i could see people already expressing their emotions and feelings even before we started the stream so hit that like button and I can see some support already coming in. Eric B. Kwesi, you've never been to Africa if you think Africans hate African American. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Sarah Justice, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button as we are starting this stream today. So my first question would be, do you think African Americans and Africans are the same? And the first person I'll ask this question is Chep. Okay, uh, I really okay. Thank you for the question, and I I wanted to know when you ask, are they the same? In like in what like in what category are you asking? Because I don't think we are the same in experience. We all have diff like when we go back to our history, we have different experiences. Like in, like Africans have experience with colonization, and African Americans have an history. Like when we talk about basically what, like I, I'm talking about the suffering we've gone through because I know we, there's other things we're gonna talk about. But if we talk about our history, we have a different history. I mean, if we go further, we have the same history. But if we go to 100, 400 years ago, we absolutely have different experiences. So when we talk about being the same, of course, we are black. That is like we belong to one race. So that is where we are same. But I think we have some differences that that are very open. Like we can clearly yeah, no, see are. that there's differences. So, yes, we are the same as from the same race as human beings. But also we have different experiences that somehow would make us a little bit different, but that's not, yeah, that's why I would say that. All right, um, Jamal. Um, there's both some differences and some similarities. Of course, the similarities is our complexion, our features and things of that nature. Um, the differences, some of the differences are different, but they're also the same. As the previous panelists just brought up, they went through more of colonialism as opposed to African American. We went to through the um, Atlantic slave trade. So both was, you know, 
was brought on, on to us by the same enemy per se. But um, I say that's the main um, similarity or differences in my um, humble opinion. All right, Sheku. Um, what, do you, what is the question again? Do you think African Americans and Africans are the same? Um, let's, let's talk about the race parts. Um, when it comes to the race, um, we are the same. We have the same race. But when it comes to like nature and um, continental issues, we are not the same. Because like for us that are Africans, like a pure Africans, um, we have a lot of differences between them, especially the culture, um, traditions. Okay. We don't have the same um, cultures and traditions. Um, you can take for me, I'm from Sierra Leone, the west part of Africa, where the slave trade started back. And you can see a lot of them are tracing their history, but they can walk towards our features, like things that we have been through. They, they can never accept um, us, the, the real Africans. Mm -hmm. There is always this discrimination between them and we. You can see a black African American can call an African a black brother. He can say, um, this guy is from Africa. And there is something that I, I was I'm always fighting for, even where I am in Russia. They always like every half every black person is from Africa. No, I always tell them, um, black people, we are black, but we are not from the same continent and we are not from the same country. So mm -hmm. identify us not by our race or by our continent, identify us by our country. Okay. So if you check the tradition and culture, we don't have the same. So for me, we are not the same. So uh, according to Sheku, Africans and African-Americans are not the same. Uh, we have somebody else who's joined us, Karis. If you could hear me, you can start by introducing yourself and uh, you can as well go ahead and answer that question. Paris, you can hear me. Yes, yes, African Tigers. What's up? Yep. Well, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I just want to contribute to the show today. You, you first have to introduce yourself and tell us where you are from and why you are interested in the topic. And then you'll go to answer the first question, which is Do you think African Americans and Africans are the same? Yeah, my name is Kariz. I'm um, from Kenya, Carpentry. I'm in Turkey. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, there is uh, any kind of hate between the Africans and African Americans. What I think there is is a miseducation between the two groups of people. There have been really miseducation and misrepresentation by the mainstream media, by the Cointel Pro media. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were growing up, we all thought about the way, for, for example, uh, boys in Kenya, when they grow up, they just they just want to be, you grow up, you, you aspire to be an N-word, what you, you want to be that, that bad, you want to be that bad guy, because that's what the media portrays to us, that our brothers in the Americas look like, we, they, they portray the, the culture. The, the gun culture so that, that's what we look up to so when when our parents were mentoring us they used to tell us don't be like this because that's who the media showed them so it's not hate it's that miseducation that's what i think likewise the way africa was presented to the african american brothers in the americas the the the, the 50 year old boy with the flies on her face they cannot even afford food that is what they showed them that africa looks like so no one wants to be identified no one wants to identify themselves in such a place okay okay we just lost one person but i hope she will be back so we also have Brandon joining us. Uh, Brandon, you can start by introducing yourself. And the first Hi. question is, do you think Africans and African Americans are the same? So somebody needs to somebody needs to mute their mic while they're not talking because I hear like background noise. Yes, 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 yes. And 
Caris, that's you. You have to mute your mic we are, as we are doing this. So we have a lot of people who are going to be participating. So I'll be adding different people in the stream at a go. Wow, PG, thank you so much for the $50 super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, Sante Sana. So um, I, was, we, I was trying to... I was trying to just watch, right? But then yeah. this brother who's in Russia started talking, talking about we not the same, we not uh we not from the same country and all that. I don't know his name. What's his name? Sheku. Sheku. Okay. Yeah. So basically, my brother, you're saying that Marcus Garvey and every other black person for like the past two thousand years was totally wrong. African Americans and Africans aren't from the same place. We're not the same. Nothing. If African Americans are not from Africa, one, why the hell do they have Africa in the title of their name? And two, where are they from? That's the question I want to ask you. Check. All right. Um, their 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 ancestors are from Africa. Okay. Stop. Stop right there. Stop right there. Say it again. Say it again. Your ancestors are from Africa. Your forefathers are from you, Africa. I don't know why you keep talking after that, because nothing else after that make any sense. All Everything right. you're gonna say is is it made irrelevant by that statement right there. Your right. ancestors are from Africa, so that makes yeah. us African. Unless we walk around looking like white people, or we've totally been transformed through DNA. What? All like, right. Um. You guys are black, and you guys said you are African American. For me, okay, for me, there is always like I don't. I. I. It's not like I'm trying to be discriminative here. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to be that kind of person that is racist. Okay, um, this has always been a fight that I've, I've been. I've been following the Pan Africans in America. I've been watching a lot of things like where they have the discrimination between Africans and Africans Americans. You understand? I have my cousin who went back to America a couple of years ago. They told me like, hey, they always call me like in school. Hey, look at this African dude. Okay? Look at this African dude. This guy is from Africa. You guys are from Africa, but we don't share the same culture, the same heart, the same suffering. We've been through a lot that you can never understand. Okay, what okay so, so, how to so you're telling me, so you're telling me that 60 years of colonization, right? 60 yeah. years where you were made a second class citizen in your own country, right? Right? You're telling me that that's worse than chattel slavery? Yeah, it's worse than slavery. Ty Tigress, why did you bring this guy on here? That's the next question I got to say. <laughs> Getting beat oh, with no. whips and put in <laughs> chains is it's not what is worse is wait. Just getting look, the British living in your occupying your land for a little while for 50 or 60 years is worse than getting killed, raped, beat, having they, your children taken away and sold uh, like animals. That's worse than that. Sorry, they didn't occupy our land for 50 years, they occupy our land more than 600 years because since the starting of slavery, they have been there working and doing things, stripping our people off, take them off without their wheels. And they give birth to kids that are bringing up discrimination between the two, between the, the same race, because of the different community and different culture. So that is the problem that I'm having with the African American. It's not about the race. I don't have a problem with the race. Okay. The problem I'm having here is like you guys been discriminating because of the culture and tradition. We don't share the same. A pure African can tell you have been through a lot. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you feel, wait. Can I ask you a question? Let me land. 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 My country, like I'm from Sierra Leone. We are from Sierra Leone, West Africa. Okay. If you go back to Sierra Leone, my brother, you will share tears because there's nothing left for our history. There's nothing left to show. Okay. Oh, but you guys oh, are lucky. You guys are lucky. Like. Your forefathers sacrificed. And people in my country would tell me, my forefather should have gone for slavery. Maybe I should have not been in Africa suffering by now. Wow. Oh, okay, let me, oh let me, okay, let me ask you a question. Oh my God. So, so, and let me ask you this, brother, because you could be sincere, but the, I will not understand the logic. So the white man did all this to you. 
And the first thing you want to do as an African is run over and be in a whole nation. I mean, Russia's probably the most cracker nation there is with white supremacy as a way of life. What would make you want to go over there and be with them? You shouldn't have no ha hatred towards other. You should have no animosity towards other black people because you went and literally got down deep in bed with your enemy. And a lot of what you're saying is based on misinformation and emotion. All right. You know, like this, I, as I'm, as I was saying, yeah, they skip everything from us and there's nothing left in West Africa now to show. There's nothing left. So if you talk about these kind of things like um, Russia is a crack nation, I am not going to that part because I'm here for a reason. I'm finishing my mission soon and I've been going back to Africa to help my people in Sierra Leone, to help my people with my ideas and what I've learned. Yeah, what we are talking about is the discrimination between the black Americans and the Africans, Americans. Now, let me say the Africans, the black Africans and the African American. Okay. What discrimination, bro? So you got to tell me what the discrimination... Because if someone called you an African or they even call you an African booty scratcher, African Americans in America don't even have the power to discriminate against anyone. So please tell me where did this discrimination take place and when did it take place? Because all the I know is when you come to America, the only reason you can go to school is because of African Americans. Okay, the discrimination is... It's not about the color, okay? It's about the lifestyle. Can you imagine an, an American? I have a friend. He's an African-American. Okay, I can say he's a black brother like me. He used to ask me. He was here a couple of years ago. He was asking me, in Africa, did you guys wear cloth? You guys chase animal outside? He was asking me short kind of question. I, I, was, I feel so embarrassed that day for a black brother to ask me short question. So he's asking you a question and you're offended by the question. Yeah, I got offended by the question. Okay, let me let me address something before you continue. I can see a lot of people saying, oh, hate is such a strong term to use in the title, but uh, I use the title just as somebody had asked me the question. They, somebody asked me that question directly. You can check my second last live stream. And also uh, on this platform, Brandon, you asked me why I brought him. It's because we have all these kinds of people who have this kind of thinking, which is different. And as I always say, this platform is here for us to learn. So it's okay. It's it's good when you have people who have diverse opinion, different opinions from what you believe, because through that, we are able to learn. We are able to learn. We are able to teach them. And I believe everybody is actually open-minded to learn about these and actually share their experience and opinion about this. And let's educate each other. Kenny, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Like the stream, we already have more than 400 people who've been in the, st in the stream with 137 people in the stream right now. Make sure you hit that like button. It's the least you can contribute to the stream. And you can as well hit that super chat. That's the dollar sign at the comment se section and support the stream. So Brandon, you can go right ahead. So my so my friend Eugene, he's in a, he's from Sierra Leone. He was living in uh, Atlanta and he just moved back home uh, to stay. He didn't he was he's an American citizen, but he was born in Sierra Leone and he just went back home to stay there. Now. My brother is like telling me, Brandon, come through, come to Sierra Leone, come to Sierra Leone. Well, he understands the reality about African-American culture and our experience. What I think it would be an injustice or a disservice to do is for an African person like this brother Sheku to come to a conclusion about African-Americans based on a lack of knowledge about who we really are. Like, you can already tell that this brother doesn't really understand what we went through as African-Americans. I'm talking about nobody had it worse than African-Americans. Nobody. And I think many Africans would agree with me on that one. On top of that, this idea, you said, oh, my friend went to Africa. He was in America and he was in school. And the kids said this to him, my brother, when I was a child, I thought as a child, name one place in the world where if you go, you're the new kid in school, the other children are not going to tease you. It doesn't matter what color you are. It, children make fun of things that are different and things they don't understand. So you can't base a grown person's opinion on the actions of little children. 
Because when we're little, we operate with small minds. But when we're older, we have to grow up and have mature thoughts. And I really believe that you're still operating with that kind of childlike mind because instead of saying, let me really go learn what's going I mean, you could literally watch some movies and learn about the African-American experience. You literally could go on Tigress's channel and see the camaraderie and kinship between African-Americans and Africans on the continent. You can go on my channel and see how much respect and love and admiration we have for Africans on the continent. We just had a, Ghana just had the year of return where all these African-Americans, look, one, Ghana apologized for their role in the slave trade, right? Where they sold African-Americans uh, to the slavers. Then the African-Americans in response went to Ghana in mass numbers to go over there and experience uh, and build brotherhood. So my brother, our actions as a people literally discredit everything you're saying. I mean, are you paying attention, brother? Does Russia let you get TV or, or internet so that you can see how black people in America and African people in Africa are actually trying to come together and uh, understanding and forgiving each other for any injustices committed and just trying to build on that? Are you exposed to that? Here's a question, um, too. If he if he's in Russia now, do that make him a Russian? No. Okay, listen. All right, this is the same question I was asking here. Um, you said a lot, yeah, about um, African American going to Africa. Last year in my country, Sierra Leone, we have um, more than four to five thousand African Americans going to Sierra Leone. It's guessing their 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 background, like where they come from, some do DNAs, and they find out they are from Sierra Leone. Okay, with an open mind. We accept them. They are we are all one. We are brothers, okay. But I'm talking about the experience. We let's talk about the um, like the way they colonize us, take things from us, okay, and they didn't return it back, okay. These are all the minds we have, and we have this kind of um, I don't know. We have this kind of blood stain in our minds and in our hearts, okay. So if a black brother that was supposed to hug a black brother, okay? Having this discrimination, okay? Okay, let's talk about you. Um, you, you guys discriminate because of like, we are from African, okay? And we, we are not born in America. We don't have this experience. This is like, most Africans move to America just to find the, the um, way to live. Like me, I came here to Russia. It's just to so have an education. Then I'm going back to my country to work. Okay, but that doesn't make me a Russian. That didn't make me a Russian, and that didn't make even if I have a kid in Russia. Okay, that that could that didn't make my kid appear Russian. I have to take my kid home. Okay, so you guys have to learn the tradition of Africa. You go back to Africa, learn the tradition, and know how Africans feel, and try to try to learn the culture and tradition and accept it that you guys are from. Okay, so you so so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What you just said kind of reinforces what I'm saying. Just because you're in Russia doesn't make you a Russian. If your kid is born in Russia, that doesn't make him a Russian. He's still a Sierra Leonean, right? Yeah, my kid is a Sierra Leonean. Okay, okay. So just because an African American is born in America doesn't make him an American. Just because his kids and his children are born in America, that doesn't make him an American. That makes him he that's still he's still the product of wherever he came from if an orange fall off an orange tree that don't make it an apple and that don't make it a plum right and then yeah. you say you guys got to learn the culture do you eat chicken brother we eat chicken do you eat oxtails brother no you don't eat oxtails cow's tails cow yes cow do you eat cow we eat cow okay so do you eat greens uh, beans, like the green beans? No, do you eat greens? You know, like leaves, the, you know, the greens. We, yeah, we have leaves. Okay, we stop right leaves. there, stop right there. We still have many aspects of our original culture even over here. That's what you don't understand. Even though they stripped us, one of the primary things the colonizers did was stripped us of our culture, our traditional language, 
our traditional uh, religions and our church, our traditional diet and spirituality. These things were stripped away from us. And yet and still, we have many of the same characteristics. We still observe many of the customs of our original traditions. We just don't know exactly what those traditions are. But you say we have to learn the cause of your own problem and the solution of it to it if you want to be that. Listen, you guys, like um, I was saying, yeah, <clears throat> all the foods that you said, we ate them, we ate um, leaves, like for me, we have our own kind of leaves we eat in Sierra Leone. You are talking about your friend Eugene, okay? If you think about Eugene, the way Eugene behaves and the way like the black African-American behave is a, there's a bit different, there's a lot of difference, okay? Like for us, we have this oneness, like, uh, what can I say? We, we are like family, like in Sierra Leone, 80% of us, we are family, we know each other, and we are like, blood, we are like we have this kind of blood-related kind of way in Sierra Leone, okay? Except like for the fullers, for me, my, my background is so like confused because I have, I have more than like six stripe background when I trace my background from Sierra Leone. So that doesn't make like, that doesn't like come with this, if my experience is so great. When I look up, when I look my country, the way people like the colonial, our colonial masters treat us, man, it's it's crazy. It's crazy out there. You can imagine we have been through colonialism. Then we come, we have civil war, and apart from the civil war, Ebola, mudslide, and all those things that is going on around the world, and we have like our mentality. We we have this kind of freeze mentality. Okay, when we think whatever whatever we're facing is what we're facing for the day, and you guys can face in that. So that 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 brings the whole difference between us. We know how to face the real hustle. We know how to face how to survive for a day. How we can how we can sleep and try to make how we sleep today and think tomorrow I'm not gonna eat. Tomorrow I'm not gonna do this. So you so basically you don't know anything about African Americans. That that's basically what. I'm getting from this. You have a lot of assumptions about how did they get there? By where did sheep? they transport them on? Uh, where sheep. did they where did they sleep when they were on the ship? Uh, I think in the cabins or what? In cage. In the bottom. Yeah, in in the cage. bottom. Laid on top of each other. So even when you say that, I know you got some kind of sense. You're talking about what we don't know about. When you yourself just said, you just highlighted an experience that is unlike any other any African has ever experienced in the entire history of our people. What do you mean we don't know about survival? We survived in the bottom of ships, dog. We survived in the bottom of ships without no food, getting thrown overboard if one of us was sick. You and you're going to say we don't know about survival? Come on, my brother. You even got to realize how ignorant that yeah. statement was. Okay. You, you said you know about survival. Do you know how we survive in Africa after colonial after our colonial masters um, strip off our lands, our diamonds, and everything? Do you know how we survive? Let me, let, let me tell you this. You know let me tell survive? you this. Wait, I'm gonna tell you. Look at this. I may not know exactly how you survived, but at the same time, I'm not discrediting what you had to do or saying you don't know how hard I worked or what I had to do. You're discrediting our story, our experience. I'm not doing that. I'm you. not discrediting your story. The problem you have is. Is the discrimination that I've been watching? You understand? I have this video before that I was watching. I could I, maybe I will share for it and share it with Af um, Africa Tigress. When a, a, um, a video like this, the, this black dude is fighting the black brother, and the guys was like, "I told you this guy is from Africa. I told you this guy is from Africa." So that that obviously bring the discrimination. You could you should never call your black brother like this guy is from Africa. <laughs> Right. Okay. Never do that. <laughs> I, I All right. I would also want to give uh, uh, opportunity. We have a number of people backstage that have not even introduced or said anything. Don't leave yet. Even if I get you off the screen, I'm definitely going to add you back. I just want everybody to at least have time to participate in this conversation. Okay, let's have a uh, virtue grace then Cassandra, Cassandra. Virtue, you start by introducing yourself, where you are from, and if you think African Americans and Africans are the same. 
Your mic is muted. Kindly unmute. Unmute your mic, Virtual Grace. Okay. Good evening, yeah. everybody in the chat room and on the panel. Uh, it's so good to be here with you. My name is Virtual Grace. Um, I'm from Nigeria. I'm Nigerian. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, to answer the question of whether African Africans hate African Americans, no, it's a capital N O. No, we don't. We we love African Americans, and just listening to the conversation just gives a sort of perspective from um, the African American aspect, and then from the African perspective. It seems like there's this disconnect or this um, misunderstanding, so to say, of our relationship. As Africans, I speak as an African who has who was you know who has never left the shores of Africa, who who stays on the continent, but has had the opportunity to interact with African Americans. We love African Americans, and we we deeply um, understand. Um, the, the history and the pains that African-Americans had to endure, all through from the period that um, slave trade occurred up until this present time, um, the, the, the difficulties they face um, to survive in the foreign lands that they found themselves in. We appreciate all of that. And yes, even as Africans, we've had our own fair share of history you know, history treating us um, in a harsh way. But I'm not going to discredit, uh, discredit anybody's experience because everyone's experience is valid. And we, we have to appreciate that fact. You know, we are not here to try to draw comparisons and take the trophy at the end of the day of who had it worse or who has had it better. We've all had our fair share of bad experiences. So we should appreciate that and you know, just accord each other that love and respect that we all deserve. For me, I, I always speak this. I had a conversation with an African-American just a few days back following a video I put up on my channel. And he just, his, his perspective was the fact that as an African-American, he doesn't really understand the deep ancestral connections we have with our ancestral lands because it was a video I made about selling off um, ancestral lands. So we got talking and I had to, um, educate him, so to say, about how deeply ancestral lands mean to us and the ties we have to those lands. And then he popped up the question, so why do Africans hate African Americans? When I saw this topic this evening, I was telling African Tigers before the, um, the conversation started that that was the same question an African American asked me in my DM. And I had to take time to educate him. And from that conversation with him, he, he, he said he understands better because it seems like um, Africans who cross the borders and go over abroad are the ones who behave a certain way. And for me, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what sort of behaviors um, he was referring to. But he, he said that when Africans go to, you know, to America, for instance, their relationship with African-Americans is usually not um, all, the best. You know, they tend to look down on African Americans and all. And for me, I couldn't, I, I couldn't understand why that should be. You know, um, I think as an African staying on the continent, it's important to clear the air here that Africans love African Americans. And you made reference to the year of return. You saw how um, the African Americans who came. Um, to Ghana, we are received very warmly. That wasn't a show. That that's genuinely who Africans are, and that's genuinely how we feel about you, African Americans. I was also in Ghana last year for the year of return, and I saw the love. I I, I saw the love and just the positive energy that just pervaded the atmosphere, and all, and it was so beautiful. So that's that's the message we want to clearly send across. And for every African American who has traveled to the continent, be it here in Nigeria or in Sierra Leone, Ghana, the Gambia, anywhere, ask. Them. Their experience is usually memorable. They, they always live to tell the story of the fact that they were received very warmly and treated very warmly. So take that and bear it in mind. We Africans, we love you. We, we appreciate the, the, the struggles and the pains you've had to endure and you're still enduring. And we do not look down on you in any way. We do not um, 
consider you any less african you are africans you only happen to find yourself in you know foreign lands where you are obviously um, treated less than you are obviously treated somehow less than humans but you are you are 100% humans just like us we see you as one and the same with us we we bear the same dna ancestral dna i you know we share the same history we were only fortunate enough to remain here i could as well have been one of the you know the offspring of the ancestors that were taken abroad i'm here today not because i'm better than any of you it was just a, a, a matter of you know chance that i got to remain back on the continent so we are all one and the same by no means should you ever think that any you know any of us on the continent do not love you or, or hate you and i can't make excuses for the africans who get themselves to europe or america and probably you know view you as less africans i can't make excuses for them and i don't know their reasons for behaving like that um i don't know if anyone here is in that category they might probably have um you know to explain themselves why they behave that way and then while i was waiting to speak i saw in the comment section somebody was asking about the word akata and the african american brother i spoke with I, i had a chat with him i dm also asked about that word so i i think i should just use this opportunity to speak on it as well that word akata is is a is a new word to, to me i actually got to learn about that word when i started interacting with african americans and you know this constant question that so why do you people call us akata i say what is akata and they said that is the, the term that africans used to describe african americans that it's a it's a condescending a condescending term that um tend to describe them as um less africans or caste we or something so it was really strange to me in nigeria for instance we have about 500 ethnic groups and these ethnic groups all speak different languages in my language for instance there is no word that describes an african american in a condescending way we just see you as you know human beings there's no word that describes you so when i when i heard the word it it sounded new and strange to me but as much as i try to defend this some people think that i'm just trying to make um, excuses but that's the truth that's the fact you can ask any continental africans that word i i don't know how come about it i don't know who uses the word i don't know it's probably those africans who go to um to europe or america and pick up the word and use it i really don't know the origin of the word or how come about the word so i like i said i saw it in the chat room as well so i felt like to just um quickly um clear the air about it uh i'll pause here and let another person speak then if there's a need for me to continue to contribute and then i'll continue okay um, next after like- kasidra then we're going to have uh after kasidra we're going to have a uh, coffee okay so it's my turn can you hear me Oh my goodness. No, it's it's Cassidra first then you. Okay, Asante Sawa. Hello everybody. This Go is ahead. an amazing conversation. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, I was just checking. I am so um glad that you got guys have this conversation. I think that it's been a lot of misinformation on both sides. I think Amen. white supremacists here in America has um given us a bad uh, rap. Um as you see media this uh plays um black Americans to be very evil and negative. And I think by you guys seeing that then you portray, you know, you you get the idea that we're no good, we're lazy, you know, because of what the media has portrayed us as being, okay? And then when we see you guys because of the anger that we feel because let me just explain uh, I had a situation that happened I went to an African shop and I was given uh, it was a clothing shop and I wanted to go in to mm-hmm. see the you know different clothing and you know maybe to pick up a couple a few outfits and when I walked in the door the attitude was terrible and I didn't it did I didn't allow that to discourage me because I knew this sister needed uh me to kind of help her to understand that all black people are not what you see in the media. I wanted to show her something totally different. I wanted her to her to see that there's some black folk out here that's that's kind, 
Okay, that's loving. And I wanted to show her some love. I didn't want to leave that shop without her feeling that, that I was different than what the media had portrayed black folks to be. Because I knew, you know, the attitude, I knew what, what it was about, but I didn't want to leave that shop like that. So I began to talk to her and I began to, you know, we begin to, you know, just talk back and forth. But when I left that shop, I had a friend, which was great because I didn't, I, I felt what I felt when I walked in the shop, but when I left the shop, it was totally different. And I think that's how we need to be with each other. If you meet a black American and you see the attitude, talk to that person. It's time for us to heal. It's time for us to come together and because we need each other. We cannot do this without each other, you guys. And they have oh. divided and conquered us for so long. They put us together. We, they put us against each other. That's why in Africa you have so many different languages because of the divide and conquer. Because they know if you guys get together and you have one tribe, it's a wrap. They know countries. that. Yes, that's why you have so many different languages. It is so many of us, you guys. And if we come together, we can do this. I don't want, I, I am here because I'm trying to learn. I'm here because I wanted us to come together and love on each other a little bit. I am here because it's, and I hope other people are here also to kind of get rid of the racism that's between us. We will treat the Chinese better than we treat each other. We'll treat the white supremacists who don't have our backs who show us every day that they hate you, we'll treat them and protect them before we will each other. That uh, that's, a, that's a done deal. That's a wrap right now. We are no longer going to treat each other like this. If you meet an African-American, and I know we have some Africans here and some different Nigerian, I, my, my young sister was talking about, she's from Nigeria. Nice to meet you, by the way. And I love what you were saying, which was had a, a lot, uh, the points were great. But I want okay. us to come. I want us Thank to do. You. I want us to go deeper. I want us to come together, and I and I want to come to Africa because it's time for us to heal on a collective, not just. And I heard the brother, and I don't know his name. I don't. I don't know if he's still on here, but um, he was in uh, Russia, I think. And I heard a lot of anger. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Bingo! A lot of anger. A lot of frustration. I heard a lot of passion. anger. And I want him to feel like I love my brothers. I love me some black folk. I'm serious. I don't care if you're from Africa, Nigeria, because I'm so tired of the hate. And I, I don't want to come there and fight with my brother. I have to fight here. I'm not coming to Africa to fight. I am coming to Amen. Africa to show some love. I am coming to Africa so that we can heal this whole craziness. I want to come there and I want some others that's on here that want to come to join me. And let's go and show some some American love, seriously, because it is we've had enough of. I mean, when we came here, our code of behavior was stolen, our culture was stripped from us. We were taught their religion. We was taught, you know, our our babies were stolen, our babies were uh, raped, they were uh, fed to the alligators, they was uh, sold. We was having sex with each other. We was having sex with our moms. We was having sex with our dad. It was crazy. This is America. It was ridiculous, but I want us to come together and I want, I think this is a place to heal. So why can't we do that? And I hope that brother that lives in Russia, I want him to come back on because I have questions for him. I want him to forgive because it is now time for us to love on each other and to forgive. The white supremacists love this. They love us hating each other. They love us combating each other. They love us tearing each other apart. We are now, this is the time for us to love each other in front of them. If we're going to fight, we're going to fight behind the scenes. But we're not going to fight in front of them. We're going to come together as a collective group and we are going to show some love, period. Because it is time for all of this craziness. What happened in the past is the past. We're, it's time to move forward. It's time to come together as a family, as a collective whole, because we've all been through hell in these Americas. And I'm sure the Africans that come to America, okay, because they've taught you how to think about us and they've taught you what to think about us. I don't want you to listen to our oppressor when they tell you, oh, this is how they are. I want you to meet me personally and come up with your own conclusion. You don't take your, somebody that hates your brother's faith, uh, uh, what he says for faith value. That needs to stop. 
So when they come to tell you about how the African Americans are, I want you to look at them. You hear them, but you ignore what they just said, and you come and meet me, and you get draw your own conclusion about me. You understand what I'm saying? Because we can meet each other, and because of what we've heard, we automatically don't like each other because of what they, our open enemy, have just told us about each other. Just like the way the Chinese are treating you guys. You think I'm gonna buy from the Chinese now? No, that's nationwide. I will not buy another item from them until they start treating my brother better. I'm not. They not getting my. They're not getting my hard-earned money. And I hope everybody on here. Here's what I say. Stop supporting the Asians. No more food. We don't eat dogs and cats because that's what they were feeding us here. We're not going to no nails, no hair. We are not buying another object from them. We will not support them as long as they're treating our brothers and, and sisters in Africa the way they treat them in, in China. They don't get another dime from me. And I digress. Okay, thank you. So next we have... <laughs> Coffee, go ahead. Hello. Yes, you can introduce Hello. yourself. How are you? And answer the first question, which is Do you think African Americans and Africans are the same? And before you answer that, I we have so many people. I mean, today's stream has attracted a lot of people. It simply shows that this is a conversation that we really need to have and we really need to heal. Because, you know, we've always had these stereotypes, we've had uh, about these stereotypes, and uh, a lot of people are expressing themselves, a lot of people are, you know, I can see a lot of emotions flaring up even in the comment sections, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. healthy. We really need to have this conversation, and we really need to heal. So go ahead, hit that like button, that's the easiest way that you can support the stream. You can as well go, uh, you can as well hit the... Um, Super chat. That's the dollars and next to the comment section. Before we have, uh, before we have um, coffee, uh, checking on this and African superstar. If you can hear me, I've sent you the link. So, yeah, coffee. Go ahead. Okay, humble greetings. Thank you for having me. Um, let me start by saying, if I'm on video, then it has to be a very good conversation. And um, I want to thank you for having me. But um, but to, to answer um, Pan-African, um, what's his name? Brandon. To answer Brandon, um, I think that we are uh, the same as far as origins, um, but the experiences is the problem, like the, the Russian guy, because I try to stay in the middle and I try to see both sides. Um, the problem is the colonialism, the way it was done, they did not tell us about how the colonialism was happening over here in Africa. Then when we were in America, they did not tell the African, the, 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 the ones that is actually um, on our continent of Africa about our experience and what we went through and a way to come back home. Because I would say to all Africans, okay, on live chat, where is an African-American place that we can call home in Africa. So that's why I asked that question about if there's no kind of hate or, 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 or thing like that, why can't we come home? All right. Now, another thing, I do respect a lot of uh, travelers. But one thing that I have found out through a personal experience is that you cannot talk about being African if you're not on the continent long term. People come and go, they have a good experience. People come and go, they may have a bad experience. But what we need is we need to have a support system of Africans because if I would have never got on this live chat, I would have never met the, young lady, um, the, the Nigerian young lady that's still on. She's the first Nigerian that I've heard say positive things. And I'm from America and Nigerians have a bad reputation around the world as far as scams and this, that, and other. So she has a, a battle to fight in America as well, you see? And me being an African-American coming to Africa, I have to integrate myself in slowly and the misconceptions about me, I have to put up with as well. But to, to answer the question for Brandon, 
we are we're we, we're the same, but we must try to um, find a way for African Americans to start coming back home and having a way to take care of themselves or having a way to 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 make a living uh, the right way, the legal way. Okay, I'm a strong believer, the legal way, and um, and that's going to take time. You know, because each country has different stipulations on how long you got to be in the country, how long, uh, how long you can stay as a visitor, this and that and the other. And that's where legal comes in. That's why I really love the fact that Tigris has had some lawyers come on and talk to African-Americans. But the African-Americans that have not traveled to the continent and we de we have developed a concept of what we thought was African. And if you look at the 80s and the 90s, you look at how we dressed, we look at how we was fight the power, ex-Klan, things of that nature. Uh, we, had a, we had a warped perception of what Africa really was, but it takes us to get our butts on a plane and come over here and start integrating the right way with people, okay? And um, the, guy from, from the guy from Russia, and and Brandon and the young lady who was just speaking that she had to go. She went to the African shop. Uh, I kind of giggled because I've been to a lot of African shops in America and I, I feel where she's coming from. But what we all need to realize is you see the passion. I don't want to say pain or hate the passion of our history for, you know, I hear it in Brandon's voice. I hear it in the guy from Russia's voice. We want to become one, but the problem is we have no blueprint. And the blueprint starts with people like us that's in these having these discussions. But I always talk to Tigris about somebody got to take the torch because some of us have been doing this for 15 years, 20 years. The younger generations have to start getting into these chats like the young lady from uh, Nigeria and all these younger, these younger people need to start getting to these chats and start talking and, and visiting these different countries. And America is not all milk and honey, um, but I'm on the continent. Okay. And I, I think it's been a total of four years being on the continent uh, for, uh, so almost, almost, almost six years I've been on the continent, but two countries. OK, so I've been here in um, Kenya for one point seven now. This is my seven. Yeah, seven, so one point seven years. So. I think that I know a little bit. Uh, I'm in the middle and that we need more African-Americans that are willing to take that chance, uh, especially like retirees and things of that nature. Definitely should try to help the next generation to um, come forward and uh, take the torch, okay? Because we can't let this situation die. We may not see it, but the children's children should be able to see us come together as one, okay? And mm -hmm. um, keep having, okay. And yeah, as far as the, the, the question, keep having a fruitful conversation, yeah. These are very important conversations and more and more people need to get into these and see the passion that Brandon expresses, the passion that the guy from Russia expresses, the passion that, the, you know, and also see that there are good people because we get frustrated when we have bad experiences because a lot of, you know, some people save up, some people save up twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in the U.S. to come to Africa and get swindled. Some people go to America thinking it's milk and honey and they get swindled. It, 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 it has to stop. At some point, we have to create a way for African-Americans to come home the right way. And we have to be able to create a way for Africans to be seen as equal in the eyes of other nations. OK, and this passion has to turn into a, a, a more a drive not to be like negative toward each other, but a, a drive to bring us together so we don't lose energy. This is positive energy right now, even though we have a lot of anger inside, especially me. I, I was very hurt when I came to Ghana 
I was there in Ghana three years. The, the young lady from Nigeria spoke about highly of uh, the year return. The year return people, I know some of their name personally, and some of those people swindled me. African Americans and, you know, and Ghan Ghanaians. It's just the truth. But I have to say it is the colonialism versus the slavery that has gotten us to this point where we can do this to each other. So how are we going to react? You know, how are we going to move forward, make a note and then move forward? Because that's why it's hard for people to deal with each other because of this, this frustration that has create that was created by the colonialism and the, the slavery. Now, to both of the gentlemen who were going back and forth, it's we can't discredit each other's um, struggle because the Sierra Leone, you know, the chopping off the hands and and all of this stuff that went on in the mines, and you know, I'm quite sure there was a mass rapes and all this kind of foolishness. Same thing happened in America: castration having sex with each other, blah, blah, blah. You hear it in our voices, you, see, you know, but we have to, it's hard to heal from that. Um, like the other issues like we have to heal. It's hard to heal from that if we're still to, to, uh, to this day hurting each other. So first thing we have to do is stop hurting each other and then say, okay, if we don't hurt each other, then we can start healing. We can't, you can't continue to hit, uh, cut a sore and then we um, you know, try to heal the same sore. Okay? All right. So, Tigress, I'll go ahead and I'll close on that. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Nice um, to meet you finally. Uh, all right. Nice, all right. To, meet you. nice yeah. to meet you too. Um, I'm like, I'm going to say gonna something. Uh, we have so many people in the stream and don't just be a passive listener. Kindly um, like that stream. I see a lot of people requesting to join in live. Unfortunately, the backstage only allows a maximum of 10 people. That's why some of you could be hearing me right now, but you're not on screen. So once we will be doing, we'll be changing, we'll be interchanging so that we can have uh, more people contributing. And those who are asking, uh, once we get people, we're going to do that. So right now, we, I want Brandon to speak, then African superstar, and then let's try to speak only uh, with two minutes, two minutes, and then we're going to add Melissa on the screen and so that she can also contribute. And then we go to virtual dress and all that. We, have, uh, we also have a um, uh, chef who was among the first people, a uh, Kenyan who's lived uh, in the US for five years, to also add her voice on this. Go ahead, hit that like button. Sub, uh, okay, I know some of you are joining for the first time. Subscribe if you've not subscribed. And also support the stream. Hit that super chat. Shout out to How to Susie. Shout out to Brandon for supporting the stream. Kenny, Codified, um, and everybody else who's actually supported this stream via super chat. Even if I've not been able to mention you. Will there be part two of this discussion? I think, yes, at this rate, a lot of people want to air their opinion. Yes, I think we're going to have part two of this stream. But uh, Brandon, go ahead, and then African Superstar, and then we can add Melissa, Virtual Grace, Terry, Chep, and all that. I'll, okay. Okay. The first thing I want to say is every African on Earth is, is like family, okay? We are one True. big family. And when you're in a True. family... Everything is not always gonna go smooth. Name one person in this group who's haven't had a family member piss them off. The people who carry on these hurt feelings, the people who are like, "Man, this hurt me." This about the problem is you're looking at your own people with a more dirty lens or distorted lens than you look at everyone else, right? Because if you lived in America. White folks then did more to you than any African or African American ever could when you talk about getting swindled and that. all that stuff. Right. So we still forgive them. We still go shop at their stores. We still I go to their little punk ass <laughs> schools. All that. I we do all that. that. Mm -hmm. But we held our own people to a greater uh, like to like a like a work like a higher standard 
then we hold them. Yet everything we do benefits them. So if everything we did was benefiting our people, I could understand holding our people to a higher standard. But at the end of the day, as men, as men, I'm just going to speak for the men. I okay. cannot be upset with a person who is African. Like, even if I, how many times you get in a full-fledged fist fight, my brother, and you know about this. You get in a knockdown, oh, yeah. drag out fight on the basketball court. Ten minutes right. later, we hugging and laughing and joking. We best friends. You know what I'm saying? That is because right. our people have a high level, a high capacity for forgiveness. We just need to start using it on each other as opposed to just using it to forgive the white man. What black folks forgave mm -hmm. Dylan Roof, okay? They was on the news mm -hmm. talking about the Lord <laughs> want us to forgive and all that. So when I look at stuff like that. I don't really care what an African do to me. It's crumbs to us. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. A couple of hundred or even a thousand dollars. It's a it's a lesson. It's a lesson, right? In the Bible, there's a there they talk about forgiveness. And one of the things people say, like, oh, grace, grace, grace. They're like, that means you're forgiven before you even commit the offense. And that's the way I look at all my African people all over the continent, and even all in America. I forgive them. Before Hello, even Brandon, it. you just froze. We can't hear you anymore. Okay. Unfortunately, Brandon, we can't hear you anymore. If you can hear me, you just froze. Okay. So yeah. let's have um, who's who's been who's not talking. Oh, African Shepard. superstar, African superstar, and then we have uh, Shepard. Shepard. African superstar. Hi, sweetie. Hello, everybody. First of all, those of you in the chat, those are. Uh, African superstar family members. Hello. Awesome. Big shout outs to the panel. I am Gina Ifoe, the African superstar. I'm also another YouTuber here. And uh, I kind of just want to offer my thoughts on this. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that it has been my experience. Uh, I formerly lived in America. I now live in the UK. And I often travel to the motherland. It's been my experience that a lot of the strife between Black Americans and continental Africans happens in the West. Um, it's been my experience that the continental Africans are extremely hospitable um, and they are very interested in Black Americans and so on and so forth. Um, I think that the conflict is learned behavior. I think obviously we have a common enemy. And so therefore they have learned how to pit each other against each other. And we are holding each other accountable for things when we are indeed, like Brandon said, not holding the white man who is at the center of uh, the, the problems that we both share and experience. I think also mm. um, in addition to what the gentleman has said, it's time to kind of move beyond uh, the discussion portion of this. Obviously, people are very upset and people have very strong emotions, but the, the reality is we have to break down the communication. It's also been my experience that continental Africans largely do not understand the uh, experience of Black Americans. Many of them have not even formally learned about the transatlantic slave trade in Africa. True. So therefore, um, they don't have that depth to understand a lot of the trauma that the Black Americans have been through. Now, the Black Americans are holding Africans responsible, which is insane, because we know that the white man is the person who was in, in charge of the slave trade. Obviously, they went, they captured, there were some chiefs involved that sold uh, Black Americans into slavery and things like that. But the white man is an unscrupulous businessman. We know that modern day. They steal, they lie, they cheat, they murder. That's how they do business. If you think they paid Africans for every person that they took, you're a fool. Because then, therefore, the recipients of the slave trade would be Africans. Okay? The people mm. that capitalized was the Americas and Europe. Because they are the ones that had the free labor and they are the ones that benefited greatly. So... True. That's just the reality of the situation because you have some people like, oh, the, a thing I hear so often on a black American, well, they sold, they sold us into slavery. Well, they, the, the white man didn't pay for, for the millions of Africans that were taken. They went to villages. They stole people. They broke families. They raped. They just pillaged. You understand? So that that's history. Um, yeah. and, and number three, um, we that are in the West understand that the media 
lies to us. We know that our education is not comprehensive. We know that religion is used as a tool uh, to, to keep our people docile and obedient and things like this. When you begin to identify that these things have been used against you to keep you in the dark, you should question everything. And therefore, you should reevaluate your perspective of the motherland because yes. the that you have learned yes. about the motherland are not factual, especially if you have not been there. And this is coming from someone uh -huh. who travels to the motherland. Yeah. I've been to six nations from the east, the north, the south, the west. I have received nothing but hospitality on the continent. And matter of fact, the diaspora that I was involved with in America and also here in the UK were some of the biggest motivators to get me to the continent because of the deep level of hospitality that I received. So I think sometimes we have regurgitated um, stereotypes that we convey. Mm -hmm. We don't have actual information ourselves. I wanted to be able to speak of from a position of authority on these subjects. So I took myself to the motherland. And I saw what happened. And another point I want to make before I close is that those Africans that you may deal with in the West, okay, is a very, very small percentage of the African population, which is 1.2 billion. So you're seeing less than probably 2% of Africans represented in America or in the Europe or in Germany or France. So it is very ignorant and uneducated to make that kind of assumption of what the entire continent is, encompassed of 54 different countries, different languages, cultures, et cetera, et cetera, based off of the two people you you ran into, the one African shop you went to that you uh, didn't African get superstar, you just froze, but to get your point. <laughs> Unfortunately, I <laughs> can't hear you right now. I want, um, I want, uh, who's this? Chef? Chef. Yeah, right. Chef, you can speak. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And for the African superstar, that was amazing. You actually talked about a lot of things that I was going to talk about and you preach my sister. Thank you. <laughs> and so just to like to add a little about that is I think like about the misinformation and about like education as, as you talk about the like, African-American not having like the education about Africa. I also think like Africans, we don't have enough information about African Americans. I didn't it's know true. I didn't know a lot about <laughs> slavery until when I came to the U.S. And then I learned a little. Like I mean, I still don't know much, but I I did learn about slavery and the history of all those, like the what happened after slavery until even until now and the police brutality and all that. I think we need to understand our history. I think for us to understand each other. I think Africans need to understand the history that African Amer Americans have when they like when they were they were taken when they were not really even sold but even like taken away to America True. and like used as slaves and us when we were colonized. <clears throat> we need to understand that. We need to understand what happened because if we keep on mm -hmm. comparing our suffering when we are, we go through oppression, <clears throat> Olympics, we will never come to a conclusion. We will never come to to unite and say okay. This is what these white people did to us, and we need to come together. We need to understand the effects, me, both me, men, like the effects mentally, how we perceived even ourselves, because there's a lot, like through colonization and slavery, it, it equips with a lot like mentally for black people to see ourselves mm. as inferior in so many things. And these are the first things that we have to break. We have to empower ourselves. And empowering ourselves is not a, through competition, you know? And so when I was listening for, like I was listening to Sheku and someone, I think that was more about Operation Olympics. And I think that doesn't take us anywhere. Uh, and I don't know your name, but when you were talking about like African, like having a way to have African-Americans coming back home, I, that is one thing that personally for me, I, I struggle, like, I mean, Afri like African-Americans definitely should come to come and come and visit uh, like Africa and learn about it, but coming back and settling down, I think it's like it has to take like because you cannot even have Ugandans coming to Kenya and settle down just like that. Right? Yeah. It, like we are, like the it economy takes time. part of it, like how it takes time. So I think it's just we, we like for African Americans to come and say we are coming home. I think we have to first 
at least understand each other, understand each other's struggle. Because even in Africans, like you, if you are coming to get a land, there's Africans who don't even have lands in Africa. You know, right. there are people living True. in slums when they're in Africa. You know, also, like having other people to come and have land and all this. Because if you are in America and you come and you have like two thousand dollars, when you come here and you have a chance to buy a land, you can buy lots of land that someone who has lived here cannot have an access even to a quarter of that land. So True. I think it has an economic. Like we have to understand the economy, like how that can affect the people who are here, and yeah, really, that's that's it. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. That's my end. Okay. All right. So I want to add Melissa to add uh, Melissa. I don't know if you're still there. If oh, you hello. Melissa, if you can hear me, and then we're going to have Sheku who had a different opinion about what we are all talking about to speak. Susie, thank you so much for the super chat. Each one, teach one, thank you so much for the super chat. Brandon calling on my art. Thank you so much for the super chat. Akitunde Bowden, thank you so much for the super chat. Melissa, if you can hear me, go ahead. Shout out to oh, Akitunde. Okay. I like this message. All right, Melissa. Okay. So um, I can't really see the question, but is it okay if you just uh, ask, tell me the question? Yes, the question was, do you think African-Americans and Africans are the same? Do I think African-Americans and Africans are the same? Yes. Um, I feel like it depends on who you ask this question to. Some people will look at it as, some people will think, oh no, we're not the same because of our struggles. And that's mostly why, that's, that's the that's most... The uh, response that I've ever had that most um, African Americans and continental Africans always like feel like they're different because of their different struggles as we all know that African Americans uh, went through very difficult very very difficult um, challenges like like um, mass incarceration slavery you know like just being stripped of their land because I know like even when I left when I left Africa I've always felt like there's still a part of me that does not still feel whole until I go back to Africa and I can't imagine even like what they are going through themselves and as we and like most and due to slavery we've seen that uh, like African Americans have, most African Americans have had a loss of their culture, and unfortunately, like I feel like first things first. Um, we should not even. I I I don't I don't feel like we should ever compare our struggles as Africans and African Americans. Like already colonialism and the algorithm of divide and conquer is already trying to torment us and when when the set when the colonialists see that we are fighting like within each other against each other it's really it's really they it's it's to the advantage if you know what i mean um and even still like i think the things first to consider like when it comes to this question is like the media portrayal because honestly um when when you leave africa some some like african some african elders will tell you oh like don't end up being like those american kids don't end up being like those blacks in america and honestly i think it's just all because of the media portrayal and and the misinformation that the media intends to portray to Africans and to be honest like even in like before you like leave Africa there's some people not everyone some people will tell you that some people will be like you know like don't don't be with African no don't be with African Americans don't hang out with them and I think it's the reason because I think this is 
I think it's because I think it's because of the media. I think it's because of the media portrayal and how you know in the media how you see police brutality and um like African Americans like suddenly Afri- like racial profiling when they are being suddenly profiled like on the streets. Um and even just as they are walking, some of them there's a recent story of this guy who of this guy who was running. I think if any of you know about it, there was a guy who was running and was shot. It was just very recently. And this is his neighborhood and he's always run there every time. And just because he was running faster, uh, the white sus- the white police suspected him and started shooting him. And so what I'm trying to say is that like there's so many things already dividing us, such as colonialism. And like this algorithm of divide and conquer has really gone it's really a tool that the media has used to divide us, to divide, to divide us further, and also like even as we live in like even as we live in like in the Western world, there's also settler colonialism, and a big a big contribution a big contributor to this is um like how like the media like how the media show us how. Like they show us their neighborhoods. For example, like when I came to when I came to um when I first went to the UK, um the first questions I was asked is that do you have a bed? Have you ever seen a bus? Those kind of questions. And so it's so whenever you go to such countries, I've already portrayed Africans as this kind of people who don't have anything and they are very poor. And when when you go to when you go to um when you go to actually like when you see other african americans because i have african american friends in canada and they tell me most of my friends um live in used to live in chicago and they tell me a lot about how like every day they would as they walk like they see police around their neighborhood and i can't imagine living that way and what i'm trying to say as a whole is that we really all of us, um, even especially Africans, we need to really take this as a contribution and try to understand African Americans' history because it's really heartbreaking. And even as I read about it, like as I watch it in the news, like I don't trust the news myself. I don't trust how it portrays our people. And I believe that we are all we are all Africans. We are all from the motherland. And things like the algorithm of divide and conquer, like we need to decolonize that. And if these conversations help us, then, you know, so be it. Let us let us really um, dive deep into decolonization. And also, like, can I, stereotypical can I, re- views. can I respond to this? Can I, can I respond to this? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah, sure. I yeah, will, I, I, first, I want to respond. First, I want to respond to this to the sister who spoke right before you, and a brother just commented. He made a chat, a uh, 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 and it was on the front, right? And what he said was, uh, what he said was, uh, he will, he would, and this is exactly what I was going to say. Our people in Africa always express this idea that African Americans should be patient and exercise caution when it comes to moving to the to the motherland. Like, like the one girl was saying, oh, why would we, uh, like, don't come to Africa and buy land if, with, like, $2,000 because there's people in Africa who don't even have land yet. And I'm like, if we wait to buy land until every African in Africa has land, when we get there, the Chinese will own all the land. Right. Because these other cultures and races are not wait. Like this brother said, he said they're not waiting to get to know you better to buy up your country. Right. So I still feel like divide and conquer is still is still here, even in the minds of some of our own people, because it's like as long as you view that little piece of earth called Kenya as like something that's like more important than the next piece of earth called Tanzania, or that's more belonging to you 
Then the next piece of earth called Uganda, you're always going to be in a colonized mindset because you didn't, you didn't draw those lines. White people drew those lines. For, so yeah. we should be just saying, look, everybody who's black flood the damn continent because it's just like duality. If we don't flood it, someone will flood it. If we don't go and get the land, someone will get the land. And there's a good chance that that someone will not look like you and will be even further removed from your experience and therefore will have more incentive to exploit you. And then to my sister right here, when we look at African-Americans in America, we always talk about police brutality and all this stuff, right? That is an issue. But in, the, in, the re, in reality, that is something that is primarily, largely, something that we can easily remedy. Because that just takes for us to actually come to the continent, right? But when you tell the Africans, don't just go to the continent and buy land, well, in reality, what you're asking us to do it's to stay in white supremacy and keep getting our butts kicked because it's like they want us to come visit, but they don't want us to stay. So basically what they want us to do is to go stay up in uh, America and keep getting whooped on. And even so that's how even a person who's African who means well can still look like a, a hateful, a, ha a hater or a colonial minded person to an African-American. And that's where the disconnect lies. We can't say, oh, everybody needs to go get in the history books to learn about African-American experience or every African-American needs to get in the history books to learn about the African experience. We literally have to do like our ancestors did. We got to go straight mouth to mouth, mouth to ear communication, spoken history. Go learn it from those people. Let them tell you. And you go learn from my people and let us tell you. Because that's how you're going to get the accurate account in the true story. Because these books are majorly written by white folks. And they write their own version of the history. But we all Africans from all over should be flooding Africa, buying land, making acquisitions, starting businesses. And that will actually create an environment where the Africans who don't have land and don't have uh, money will be able to gain it. Because those are the people you're going to hire to run your businesses. Therefore, they can make some money, and that's it. Okay, okay, okay. We have um, each one, each one. All right, okay. Can I can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Um, I've listened to Could everybody. Could I say something just to, reply, to respond to, because I was, um, okay, sorry. Uh, Who's trying, uh, is, uh, Chef, is that you? Chef and Chef is here too. So, okay, let me say something. Um, this brother was talking about. Um, okay, first of all, I'm gonna say in Africa, he was trying to say like the white people they they try to draw um, boundaries between us in Africa. Um, before the white people came to Africa, there was already borders because we have um, different tribes. We have different cultures and tradition in Africa as a whole, okay? They didn't create the border, for we ourselves create the border. Even with us in Africa, we have difference among ourselves. There is this, there is this discrimination. Even with us in Africa, there is a great discrimination um, amongst ourselves. So if, if we have the discrimination among ourselves and because of culture, tradition, religion, which Africa didn't have religion. We have our own traditional spirit, which we used to worship before, okay? And we have this kind of tribalism in Africa. We have this kind of discrimination, okay? So that that's create the boundary, even within the, any country in Africa. And my other point is, um, we shouldn't be class in Africa like it's a country. Let's try to open their minds up. Africa is not a country, it's just a continent. Like the American is a continent. You have different countries in, in America, like Europeans is a continent. We have different countries in Europe. Okay. That we should let's try to understand this point that Africa have already divided before the coming of our colonial masters. We shall have this point in our mind. 
Then two, um, a lady was talking like when when you want to when you want to leave Africa for the show, like you want to go to America. This was always um, parents told the kids, don't be like the African Americans. Try to try to be the best, okay? Because the what am I saying here is the media has portrayed you guys to be a different kind of person. You guys that portray you guys to be different kind of person. And every kid back in Africa want to be like you guys. And if every kid want to be like you guys, that bring a lot of um, problem back for us back home. So that is another difference between us. And I was saying here, somebody was talking about land. Like, um, let me say, in Africa, there's always problem with lands. So if so, I, I was reading the comment back and somebody said the Chinese have already take 80% of the lands in Africa, which is obviously some part of Africa. Uh, that is that have happened, and somebody talk about uh, how the rip people back, take people from Africa, and take them back to the United States. And that is not all part of Africa. We have certain countries in Africa. We are talking about the Sierra Leone, where I come from. Uh, talk about Guinea, Senegal, uh, Ghana, Gambia. I think Liberia. These are the these are the count Nigeria, some part in Nigeria. So these are the country where they the took slaves to America. So most of these countries, like for us in Sierra Leone, we do we we used to study about slave slave trade when we were doing social studies in school. We study about slave trade and we learn a lot about slave trade. So if I try to be like told my brother here, like we have the discrimination, it's just because of our traditions and other things. Okay. I don't want to hurt my brother, and I don't want my brother to get hurt through my words. It's just a discussion and try to learn what the difference that we have, and we try to accept each other, and we fight against towards one force. Because if we try to unite us as, as a black brothers, like a black unit, okay, let's forget about our dis let's forget about the continent, let's forget about um, everything, and walk around this, we will overcome the white supremacy. Okay, but let's let us accept each other. Okay, because for me as for me as a, as an African, a pure African, I have this meant like this colonial me uh, mentality in my head, and whenever I see whenever I see them, I grow offended, because I I know what they have done in my country and things they have done to my people, and it's it's offending. Okay, so like these are my points. So we have to clear this difference. For me, I don't have problem. I always tell you, like, the only problem and difference we have between Black Africans and Black Africans and Black African American is the culture tradition. We don't share that common and the struggle. That's the only thing we don't share. All right. Can I? Can everybody hear me? I would like yeah. to say my piece. Okay. Um, is African Tigers there? I really want to. Thank her for giving me the opportunity to talk in our show. And I would also like to thank uh, African Superstar because she's very on point. She has a lot of uh, um, understanding as to the dynamics between the Africans in the motherland and Africans in the diaspora. And she's lived in more than one country. So she has... Uh, a very clear perspective of the whole story. I really do appreciate the young man, what he just said. I also enjoyed the part of discussion, in the part of this discussion on what uh, Pan-African Strike Back, the point he made about the land. And in order for me, for me to move forward, I would like to address the part of the land and why it's very important, the point that he made. So, Pan-African Strike Back, uh, the point he made there is very powerful. You don't have to wait for every every person in the motherland to get a land before you can actually get. Um, in other words, you have to do whatever is possible to get down there and get the land. He has a strong point. If you don't, somebody else will get it. And most of the people that are talking about um, the land, have to wait for Africans in the in the motherland to get land first. Um, it's possible that those have left the the, the African uh, continent for a very long time. They don't really know what's going on. They don't understand the land grabbing and how uh, real estate has become a very big thing in Africa. 
And it's also very important for the Africans in the, in the diaspora to recognize this and use this opportunity to go down there and see what they can buy because most of the lands out there are not as expensive, especially if you are not in a major city. Like in Nigeria, you're talking about Lagos, uh, Abuja. In, um, in Kenya, you're talking about uh, um, the, the, what is that capital of Kenya? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Nairobi. So you talk about lands in Nairobi. So moving forward, um, on a spiritual uh, sense of the whole thing too, it's very important for we as a people, especially uh, uh, those ones in the diaspora to have a land. And the reason for that, I will tell you, in Africa, when, when you want to demonstrate that you are no longer a part of your family, maybe you've grown up and you married and you have you have your own family and everything. When you want to demonstrate that to maybe the village or everybody, you buy your own land. So in a spiritual sense, in Af African spiritual sense, when you buy your own land, you have removed yourself from maybe uh, your other part of the nuclear family. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you have, you have removed yourself from your other part of any other part of your nuclear family, now you are saying that I have my own thing, I have my own family, I have my own land. And now you guys have to understand, people get blessed through the land that they own, okay? So when you have a land and you grow upon the land, you grow a seed on the land and the, the rain comes down, the rain is a blessing from above, falls on the seed. So you have to look at it that way when it comes to yeah, go ahead, go ahead. A woman in the diaspora go down there, buy their land. That's your blessing right there. Because when you get that land, it's going to take people to help you get it. It's going to take people to help you uh, erect any structure that you wanted to erect on it. It's going to take people, and all those people are going to benefit from what you've brought. And then to cap it off, the more we go down there and we buy the land, and the people who buying the land from will also learn from us. In their mind, they'd be like, okay, I'm actually, I'm selling this land, this ancestral land to people that look like me. That's a, a blessing, too. So you have to look at it that way. So if we don't go down there to buy their land, most of the time, um, some of the problems that the Africans in the motherland have is a um, what I call stomach infrastructure issues. So, so like infrastructure issues is pretty much, uh, it lies on the lowest level of uh, Maslow's hierarchy. That's uh, you, everybody needs food, right? So <laughs> they're going to need food. Some, some of them make away with things like land in order to be able to sustain. So um, the point um, that was you, all of you guys made, they were really, really concrete and solid point. But now I'm going to have to a a answer the question about if Africans hate um African uh, Americans, do Africans hate African Americans? Now, my take of the question is very simple. Um, the feelings and the attitude or the way a lot of people are going to feel when it comes to this question or react when it comes to this question is going to be very different. Now, I'm going to give my perspective from a person that's lived in the United States for over 24 years. That way you can see for yourself whether or not the question is in affirmative or in negation. Now, you have to keep this in your mind that I'm very open-minded. I'm a very open-minded person, meaning that I accept people and more especially when people that look like me. I have a lot of respect for people that look like me. I'm not a racist, but it's just that I believe that Charity should begin from home. So I hire black. I keep black. I buy black. Everything that I do re revolves around people that look like me. And I think it should be the same way. So I went to school here. When I was going to school, I remember the African-Americans, they will call you names. And when you just came, you do have an accent. Yeah, you don't speak like them, right? And over time, you start to change. It starts to wear on you and you start to change and start looking different and all of that. Your mannerisms start changing and all of that. So the reason why that happens is miseducation. Miseducation on the part of the African-American and miseducation on the part of the Africans that just came. Because 
when you are leaving Africa to come here, they expect you. Uh, they expect that you're gonna do well and do uh, great things. Uh, for me, when I was coming here, my parents brought me here. So um, when I was coming here, uh, nobody told me about any negative stuff about African Americans. Period. I have to be honest on that. Now, when I came, I had that little open mind mind of mine, and I wanted to see for myself the situation. So I started digging deep into some of my observations. So <clears throat> the Africans, they kind of keep to themselves. They cook their own food. They, 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 they have um, meetings amongst themselves. They, they talk about how to help themselves. They send their kids to school just like African-Americans do, okay? Now, you have to understand uh, the difference. The difference has a lot to do with time, the time mm -hmm. that they were taken and brought here. And it also has a lot to do with the system in place from the time they got here till now. Now, I want you to take this into consideration. The, the people that came from Motherland, say, 30, 50 years, they have a different experience. And now the people that were mm -hmm. stolen on the capitalism and brought here as some paid laborers, laborers, they were slaves, right? They have a completely different experience because mm -hmm. they are traumatized. They are hugely traumatized. They, can't, they, they have a dis dysfunctional nature. They have a lot of problems, anger in them. And that reflects in the way they act. I cannot say that they are misplaced in the sense that they, the ones that came from motherlands are better than them. That's not true. They are not. I have to prove that point to you. The ones that come from motherland and the ones that are already here that came through slavery, they are the same. Their experiences made that them different. <laughs> now, the African Americans have done a lot of good to the world. If you don't know, let me break it down to you, okay? We that came here, we were able to come here because of the African Americans. If not for them, no black man will live in this land today. If not for African Americans, the Chinese cannot be strutting and, 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 and flexing their muscles the way they're doing. Okay, let me tell you guys that. In the 60s, the Chinese planned this out. They were supporting the blacks to get what they got today. The civil, civil emancipation and all of that kind of civil rights movement. They were helping the blacks during the civil rights movement because they know what it means to them. Okay, now today, the, the, the Africans that came from Africa have been watching a lot of TV, have been looking at the media the wrong way. When one of the motivations that I had to come over here to America was Boys in the Hood. I love Boys in the Hood so much. I watched it every day. <laughs> I watched it, I watched it every day. And to be honest with you, me and Brandon. To be to be honest with you, all what we watched back in the uh, uh, late eighties, early nineties were African American movies. African American music. I love Tretch so much that I can rhyme Tretch. Not in my nature, Tretch. So in school, we be playing with it and we, you know, we want to show off that we can, you know, you know, roll like that or talk like that in classes and the girls be running and chasing all over the boys that be doing that. So I, I wanted to communicate this to you guys that the the Africans from the motherland and the Africans in, in, in Africa, all diaspora. All the Africans, what they call ADDI or ADDOS, we are the same people. We shouldn't fall into the tool of the oppressors to divide ourselves and, and classify ourselves the wrong way. The, the ones that, that, that came through slavery went through a lot of shocking experiences that have made them who they become. They have so much anger. Why do anybody mm -hmm. want to hurt somebody else? It's because they are already angry. And they have already been hurting themselves. And that translates to them doing it to other people. So it's going to take some time. And one of the ways that we can solve this problem is for us that, <laughs> that, that came from the motherland to be open-minded. You can't see a black man and you're already assuming he's going to be bad. He has a gun in his pocket. He's going to shoot me or he smokes weed. That's a wrong motive. You have to be open-minded, okay? You have to be 
open-minded. You can't judge somebody be before you get to meet the person. It's wrong. So we have to be going to the process of getting to know ourselves, just like we're doing now. I, 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 we're here on this show, and she's hosting this show. I think Tigers is hosting this show. Is She's helping us to communicate and talk. So we can understand our differences. That way we can know how the oppressors are wielding the power that they have. It is divide and conquer and divide. If you divide people, you can rule them easily. Easily, But now we have information and a lot of knowledge flowing around. A lot of you guys live in Africa. For for instance, um, um, uh, Pan-African Strides Back, he, he has properties there. He's doing stuff there. So he understands that Africa is like, the frontier is the place that any black man or woman need to be right now because in the next 10 or 20 years, it might be too late for you. So we have to start looking at this perspective of things. African-Americans brought so much to the world, hip-hop culture, uh, trendy gr grooming styles, flashy wear of um, you know the bling bling system and all that kind of stuff. There's so much that they've brought. But the thing is, we as the black people, we don't even recognize this. We overlook them. And guess who makes money off of it? The Jews make money off of it. Now, now, now the modern reason why I'm on this show is to show you guys that we are not different. Not only I'm able to show it by by saying it, but also by the things we can we can we have seen. Okay, in the '60s during the revolution, you see how African Americans changed and and made it possible for people to have civil rights. Although they weren't able to impact the constitution in such a, a way that uh, uh, black people cease to become properties, but they have done a lot. We come here in America, we get what we want. We 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 we, we do what we cite uh, rights amendments. Who do you think made this possible? And African leaders, where do you think they went to school when when they came to America during the sixties? It was segregation period. They had to go to all these HBCU schools, and that's when they were. That's when they were decolonized. They were given the revolutionary ideas on how to change things and gain what we have today as flagship independence. It's not an economic independence, but it's just a flagship, you know, nationhood, in the political independence. They call it. They got the idea from the United States of America. I know all yeah. the first presidents. All the first presidents of Africa all went to school here. Nandi Azikiwe of Nigeria went to school here. Uh, the guy from uh, Ghana and Kuruma went to Lincoln. That's where they were given this idea of Pan-African idea, and they went back and they, and they came up with the independence. W.E. Du Bois, everybody knows him. He's the bourgeois African-American guy. Very smart. He wrote the Constitution of Ghana. You have to start hey. understanding that African-Americans have done so much for the freedom that we that we share today in the world but nobody talks about it i know because i live here and i have been around here i i, I work with the smartest of them all i started engineering i've met as a lot of them that are so freaking smart that your brain like that you'll be like shocked however we don't celebrate our people we talk down on our people we think we are better that's wrong we're the same thing we are all the product of our experiences and circumstances the Africans that just got here, look at them. What? How different are they? They get into all sort of stuff. That shows that shows you right there. It translates to the fact that humans can react differently given the situation they find themselves. Some of them also do the, the exact same thing that we. Some of us be like, okay, I'm not gonna deal with you because I envision you're gonna be this bad or that bad. So we should that make away with all those views and start recognizing that. Why we think we are different, we are not. We are actually the same people. And what we have to do now is to come together and save what is there to us, which is Africa as a continent. If we don't, we'll lose it forever. So the information mm -hmm. age has made it possible for us to come together. Imagine uh, African Tiger, she can command all, almost 20,000 people. She can tell 20,000 people what to do. That's the power that, that we never had before. Pan-African, he can command up to the same amount of people. And this is a powerful tool that we have. Let's use it to our advantage. I think that's all I have to say for now. But if there's anything else that uh, you guys want to add to it, I'll be more than happy to listen to it. I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to say my piece. I hope I've touched people's lives. And don't that forget, I wanted to let them know what I do. Uh, I have a YouTube channel too. It's called Each One Teach One. What I generally do is I support uh, young uh, blacks 
I don't care where you're from, but uh, it's just like supporting them in technology. I help in training. I, I have a, a business where we make softwares. I hire them. So I have about 10 of them that's laying across in the African continent, some in Turkey and some in Indonesia that I work with. And we actually have a product and I want you guys to check the product out and see how we all can work together to help ourselves. Thank you guys. I will send the link to uh, African Tigress and whatever she decides to do with it, that would be awesome. Thanks again. All right. Almost Thank good. you so much for your contribution, each one, each one. Uh, just send me the link, send it to me uh, in the email, and I'm definitely going, at the end of the stream, I'm going to definitely add it in the description box so people can go out and check out what exactly you do. All right? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. So thanks to everybody. I see a lot of people asking questions. A lot of people in the stream. I'm still trying to add. We have a number of people back backstage. Unfortunately, some I'm not able to add. But yeah, go ahead. Support the stream. Hit that super chat. That dollar sign next to the um, next to the comment section. If Today's stream, I knew it would draw a lot of people. We've had over 1,300 people on the stream already, but it's so unfortunate that you can just join the stream and not even like, you don't contribute, you don't chat, you don't do anything, like, really? You can't do anything, you can't even like the stream. Let's get those likes up. We can't have less than 200 with about 1,400 people now who've been in the stream already. If you didn't like it, that's the least that you can contribute to the stream. So I want Chef to respond to this, and then we're going to have uh, Sheku. I mean, I had a number of questions that we wanted to respond to, but I think we are still on the first question. So definitely there's going to be a part two of this stream. But, well, looks like this issue is deep and we really need to talk or share um, about it. Okay. Okay, so as some, I'm, I'm in Kenya and I, I was the one who brought the land issue up. And the reason why I did is because in Kenya, we have people grabbing lands. And it's not just Chinese. Mm -hmm. Kenyans themselves grabbing mm -hmm. lands. And we have, when we talk about land, this is a very sensitive issue, like mostly in African countries. Like we, we have xenophobia. We have South Africans killing Nigerians. So like this, the land issue is something I'm up, and I think people misunderstood me. I didn't say we have to have, like have all Africans to have lands to allow African-Americans to come. I think it's a good thing to even have Af black, like African-Americans investors coming to Africa to invest in Africa. And even I, I, like, I think government should even have like the, the laws and the tariffs lowered for African-Americans to come and invest in Africa. That is different from having African Americans coming and settling down and buying lands. Because I think the way Africa in itself is so disunited. Like we like today I was listening to PLO Lumumba talking about even having one Africa, having Africa united. You like Africa. having a united Africa. We still have a very long way to go. Like even in Kenya itself, we still have tribalism. We have people fighting over lands. We have and it's, it's not the idea of like, oh, when I sell land to a black person, I feel better. I think like in Kenya, it's like, if I sell even land to someone from my tribe, maybe I feel better. You see where well, I think the point I'm trying to make is we are still, we need to make progress. We need like, as uh, like even as Africans, I'm talking as an African living here in Kenya and understanding where we are. Because if we want, like, and I said, earlier if we want to move forward together and like united we have to solve the the minor problems because if we just put a say like a band-aid over the problems and say okay we can unite we can come over at some point it will have to erupt and it will it will be more problematic than having a, a, a better way of solving problems yes the truth is yes chinese are taking over almost everywhere in africa which is really sad and that I don't think solution is okay. Let's 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 have Africans America come coming and grabbing as much land as they can, so that at least at the end the Chinese don't have enough land. I think the, the what we should be talking about is what should African governments be doing? Like how are we gonna do this to ensure 
Af Chinese are not coming and taking over. Like how, this is, as my, I hate to say this, but I think this is more like an African problem that like African Americans, yes, yeah, some, some people who are very well informed, people who have decided to come and learn and like understand the history and how, how come are like Chinese having access to Africa the way they're having? Like, how is it happening? You know, like it's, you have to understand Kenya, like we don't, we, we don't have good roads, but Chinese will come and say, we are going like, let's give you loan and make good roads for you. And that is like something easy for, like it's like a quick money because the presidents are like in 10 years, I wouldn't be in power. That's not my problem, but I'll have roads, you know? So yes. The land issue, I still don't think, and I, this is me disagreeing with most of you, I don't think the right idea, the right solution is saying, okay, since Chinese are grabbing lands, let's have more African-Americans come and buy more of it so that Africans like Chinese don't grab more of it. Oh, and another thing also, still Brit, like some white people still have land since they were we were colonized. They like we had like people had they had to hold leave on, land for hold on, hold on. Okay, can I just finish this? Can I say hmm? okay, I we, want to yeah, just respond say, to your okay. first part? Okay. Okay. I, I before I, before I forget what you said. It sounds okay. to me like I hear this from a lot of people. Uh, African people. It's like you guys go to, you guys aren't in Africa. It's like you guys are like, nah, wait until we go get money from the white man so we can come back and buy up what we want. Then y'all can come in and get what y'all want. Because it's like, if this was smart, if this was true, if this was a real sentiment, why are the Africans letting the Chinese and everybody else buy up what they want, but they're asking the African Americans to hold off? That just doesn't add up. Okay, what I'm trying to say is like when Chinese are coming to buy land, it's not single chain, they're coming as the government, which is really wrong. And I'm I'm against it. Like I'm really against it. I'm and that's why I'm saying it's a really African problem where our leaders are so easy, like getting money from the Chinese government to allow the Chinese to come in. You know, it's not like in US, the US would say, Okay, let's let's give you money and so we can have African American come like buy land that's that's not happening because of the situation is and of course that's not like that's not the answer like what i'm saying is yeah that is the problem we are where we are our economy is not doing well and all this because we keep on getting money from imf from world bank from the loans from all this because the point of having the loans from imf world bank and china all these other countries is basically to make sure these countries can hold our resources. That is why, like, I don't think they are doing this because they want to see Africa prosper. I think they are doing this for their own benefit. Basically, it's not even that I think. I know. I basically that's what it is. They are they are giving us money so that we can give keep giving back with interest, allowing them to come and invest mining oil, like drilling oil, mining minerals in DRC and all that. So when you talk about land, I think the answer is not okay. Let's come and just take it. You know, I think the land, the, the the thing is, we should have, we should fight for freedom for Africans to have, even at least to have the the freedom to own lands because most of people here don't have lands. If you go to the Maasai, most of the lands are but taken we're, by but the we're Africans. Africans. Yes. Okay. You are Africans. So yes. you yeah. But you got that, but you got that colonial division up in your mind because you said let's fight for Africans who are here to own land. It's like, do you not realize that no matter if I buy it or you buy it, it's still an African who's buying it? Whether no, the no, traditional no, 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 no. no, I don't think I don't think if if okay, if African Americans come to Africa and they all own lands and Af like the Africans who are in Africa don't own, own land, I don't think that is saying we are owning land. No, I don't think that's how it, it is. I think you what you are okay, you are all like yes, you are you are you are African American with an heritage of Africa. You, you more like you are and I'm not okay, I'm not trying to say 
Africans are not Af like Africans, Americans are, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and say that about colonization because you try to say some, some okay. real col me... colonial minded stuff right now, but you don't want to say it. Okay, okay. I'm, no, I'm, I'm just... trying to say, I think being an African American, you like there's a struggle that Africans are going through that through this conversation, especially when it comes to land, that no one has touched about. For example, mm, uh, conservatives like we have conservations in Mas like in the Mas like Masai Mara, we have in like Hippie and all these places. Masais live there, Masais are uh, they have like they always like they're pastoralists, but most of their lands are being closed off. Well, you know, the reason why is because of conservation, so they, they end up even like. Their, their cows don't have access to pasture because it's not because of conservation a, it's because your government doesn't give a damn about you so while you're like let's fight this fight for all africans to have land it's a fight you you can't win so why would we wait for you to fight a fight you can't win because you're you the maasai let the government take their land bro that means they couldn't fight the government, yes, and that means that the so most of our and that means and that means the government who is of your same blood doesn't care about the land, right? They don't care about the traditions or the cultures. So you're telling us to wait in the wings out of respect for tradition and culture that the people who you guys have given power don't even respect. That's a fool's well, bet. What you're trying to tell me is because our government doesn't care about us, so we should not fight for our government. We should not fight so that we should have a government that cares about us. Instead, we should just let people come and grab all the lands, including. What I'm trying to tell you is, what I'm trying to tell you is, stop thinking of yourself as a Kenyan and think of yourself as an African. The oh, only yeah, way Africans, the way the only way Africa will have power is if there's a United States of Africa. That means all the land. Is going to be open and accessible to everyone in, on the continent. The tribes, yeah, the Maasai, whatever they are, these are just splinters of, of broken kingdoms and nations. These I, tribes are yeah. holding no weight. Can I, can I but, say something? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. I've heard the sister talking about the land in Africa, which presently we are facing this problem with the Chinese people. They want to grab all the lands in Africa. And this brother is talking about the United um, States of Africa, which um, the late Gaddafi have been fighting for, for Africa for so long. But due to um, Barack Obama, which is one of the greatest enemy for Africa, I'm going to say that, okay? He fights against that force. Africa have been trying to unite. We have been trying to put our states together, try to have one economy, one currency, sorry, and everything is one. And if you look, if you take a look, a recent thing that happened, where for me, I'm from West Africa, we want to have this kind of eco, eco economy, where in the, um, the people yep. from, like, from America and France, they try to stop it. So it, it can't yeah. work. So it's very difficult, okay, for Africa to stand on his own now, because one, we have, we have our own issues among ourselves. The discrimination is right um, um, between us. Okay, we have yeah. this problem among ourselves, especially between tribalism and everything. And I'm from Sierra Leone. If I go to Guinea, okay, officially my 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 like my parents, my forefathers, they are from Guinea, the neighboring country from Sierra Leone. Okay, when I go to Guinea, like my grandfather is a Guinean, but I was born in Sierra Leone. Okay, so when I go to Guinea, like for holiday, you know, they, they, they have discrimination. They have the name they call my own kind of susu. Okay, so there's this kind of discrimination among ourselves, even down in Africa. So you guys shouldn't surprise if it's continue with you guys. It's always been as black people, this is how we are. Okay, we, we just need to have one force. And how are we gonna have this one force? If we think straight and think where you guys come from, you guys come from Africa and you guys come from uh, West Africa. Let me say most of the, the, the people that went through slavery, they are from West African. and I have seen the place, I've seen the chain, we had to strip your, your forefathers. I, I didn't want to talk about it before, but I have to say it's out, okay? In the Shabu Island, I've been there, I've seen a lot of those things, okay? But you guys have to remember, like, you come from Africa, it doesn't matter. Don't try to, dis don't try to discriminate your black brothers. And if you guys think, like, you want to come to Africa and get a land, 
it's very difficult because we ourselves it's difficult for us okay so these are my points that i want to make okay Sheku. coffee okay so oh, okay check talk and then coffee would go next god's clan off uh, unfortunately we cannot hear you at all i don't know what's up with your audio but check go first yeah so to really go ahead and just say i'm not like i'm agreeing with what i don't know what his name is it's about like the, the way the problems we have in like land like before we even have like land and all african unity like we know the the unit african unity thing started a long time ago with kwame kuruma with all this and people like Gaddafi was like doing the same thing and they ended up dying uh so the thing is we have like most we, we have to acknowledge that as much as we say our government doesn't care about us we have to understand <laughs> even the fact that our governments are almost they're in chains with other countries like other the, the western countries the the, the 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 moments a leader comes up and try and do something that is more pan-african there's always war in that country and so that's why like we mm. need to like the, the thing is that we need to fight like this fight comes with, it comes with war it comes with a lot of people losing Blood. Like, and that's Blood. Why, Blood. so instead of just having Blood. everyone to come and fight and like let's like as i i'm not i'm not thinking just as a kenyan i'm thinking as an african because what happens in kenya it seems like sometimes it happens in Tanzania, it happens in Uganda. It's all this, it's, it's as much as it's different, it's the same. No one, no one wants to fight anymore. No one wants to fight anymore. You can see that just oh, yeah. by watching the news. No, oh. China, if, if people still wanted to fight, China and the US would be at war right now. This is all about money. You can keep bringing up the old days, which that stuff happened, but right now, if there was a war so, in Africa, every country in the world would go. You said what? South Sudan is still fighting. DRC because there's fighting. nothing there that anyone wants. And they're but fighting a religious still... war. They're fighting a religious war, not a war over land, per se. So DRC, it's over land, but fighting. it's religious. No, you, you. I think you're a little mis misinformed about that because people, like for example, DRC has never, like for a long time, they have not seen peace because they are fighting over resources. As PLO Lumumba said, DRC is a country that should be an engine of Africa because they have so much resources. But there's always war in that country. Like you, like they have almost. I don't even know how many minerals they have there, but they don't. They are not rich. And there's always and so you fight. think that so you think that black people are the reason for those wars? You really believe no. that? Those wars no. are perpetuated by the very people who you are telling us to take a back seat to. Those are wars perpetuated. Oh, yeah. Kenya will have more okay, chance I of going to really, war. Okay. I think you really Please misunderstood what in. I said. I think you really misunderstood what I said. I didn't say they are fighting because of black they are fighting because the, the white people. Okay, this I, I, one time I was in a class and they used this example. They say there's 10 cookies somewhere and then white people take the nine cookies and leave the one cookie for all of you to share. And how can like, how can like one, like almost like 10% of our population take nine, nine cookies and give one, percent, one cookie to 90% of population? What do you think will happen? when they have one cookie to share for 90%. This mm -hmm. always war because everyone wants to get something from it. So this is what you're ignoring. Fine. You're ignoring something. You're ignoring something. You're ignoring the what? fact that the reason why the 1% can take away your nine cookies is because no one else in the country has the ability to buy any cookies. When the app, like I have business in Africa, I employ people. The people who I employ went from being poor with nothing mm -hmm to being able to make purchases and send their children to private school. When you have a population that is willing to come in and hire you, not like the Indians right. who run your economy, who, who build things and don't even give you anything, we hire Africans. I hire Africans unapologetically. So you're saying, yeah. look, the guys who are going to empower our people yeah. financially, I, you guys stay out. Go ahead. Okay. Let, let, oh, me, okay. let me come in. Let okay. me come in real quick. Hello. All right. Hello. All right. Hello. Yeah, system. I don't yeah. want to blow guard. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's have coffee go first. Uh, and then I think Shaku is trying to talk. Yeah, I don't want to blow guard. 
Koki, then we have Sheku. And before then, I want to give a shout out to everybody who is supporting this live stream. Uh, I think I didn't mention Eric, uh, Sheikh, Blue is Cheek, Aaron, Brandon, Jamil, Aaron, Atikas. Thank you so much for the super chat. We've had over 1,400 people in the stream, but it's surprising that only one, uh, only 193 have liked the stream. So if you haven't, that's the least you can contribute. If you you can if you can't super chat, at least hit that like button as we continue the stream. Okay, coffee. Then we have Sheku. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, I hear the passion and it's it's really rejuvenating. I I really appreciate it. Um, but what I wanted to offer was uh, a, a solution because we have to move past the back and forth. And the points that both people are making, uh, the young lady who is uh, talking about the land, at first I 100% disagreed with what you're saying, but then after I heard your reasoning, I said, okay, I can understand. Now, as far as a solution goes, maybe you're not understanding my sister that if you take, just really quick, because I only got two minutes, if you take uh, African Americans spend so much money in America, we're like almost at two, two trillion dollars a year. If you take all of the African Americans and put them on the continent, Africa will become the world power instantly. The American economy will fold. That's how much money that we spend. That's number one. Okay. So to say that we should not come home and hire you like Brandon has already started, or me, because every cent of my money goes to the African economy from the American economy. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're contributing by breathing here on the continent um, when we're here. But the, that's, a, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there at this point. But what I wanted to say as far as a solution, there needs to be a situation that develops through first communication that's gonna take time for us to have face-to-face -face conversations uh, with government officials, with uh, people who can support us. Someone, I don't know which one of you made the comment about China has the backing of the government. We are ex-slaves. We do not have the backing of the United States to come home. We need you. And when I say you, we need the continent of Africa and its residents to accept us as their own because we keep coming back to we are all one so if we are all one your problem your land problem is our problem as well you, you hear, hear me again your land problem is our problem as well because we are of african descent as well but we bring a lot to the table we're not like chinese or the Indians or whoever, we come with resources, we come with, we are the, we're the population of the people that defeated and got our rights and got things uh, to where we can actually purchase things and we can do things. Somebody was alluding to that, the things that we fought for. Okay, we, we can actually, you know, say fuck the police in America. Uh, you know, some places in Africa, you still will be missing by saying anything about anybody of power. So take that in, 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 in mind, and I don't want to, you know, bogart or anything like that, but let's continue to have these good conversations. But the solution is for us uh, to become one nation. When I say one nation, that means African-Americans, the diaspora, all of the tribes become one. If Africa became, instead of being 54 countries, fighting each other, having 54 countries, then you have different languages, different tribes, then you have tribes that have clans. That's too much. If we went under one, we would be the world power on the African continent. Between the diaspora, Africa, well, we're, we're part of the diaspora, the diaspora and the African continent coming under one flag. The closest I think that Africa's ever came to that was Shaka Zulu. They hate to go that far back, but you know, we need to become one nation, one flag, and we need each other because um, if 
Africa could do it by itself, then it would have already done it. Okay, so thank you, Tigris. I just wanted to add a solution. And I would love to hear more panelists and more people offer solutions to solving right. the issues with us. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Tigris. Yeah, it's Shaku again. Um, I've listened to you guys talking about the land in Africa and the Chinese. I'm presently, I'm studying economics. And my co I have, I, I met with Africa and Tigris in Egypt like one year ago. And I explained to her my, one of my initiative and idea like Africa in 20, Africa in 20, uh, 2040, like the Chinese revolution. Okay, and which is like what we are facing now in Africa. And if we don't be careful as a nation, okay, we will lost our, we will lost everything. This will be one of the greatest um, war, like one of the greatest, um, how can I call this? This will be more than World War II or three because you can come from Asia and have 80% of our land and you come with a coming to Africa to work, as somebody was saying, yeah, then you come with your Chinese people and stop Africans not to work in that company. And somebody was saying, if he, ha if he has a company, he will employ black brothers. Yeah, because you were black and the Chinese people can do that to us. When they come, they have their engineers, they have their carpenters, they have everything that they will put just for you not to have job. Okay? And it won't help our economy. And that will, bring, that will bring the hunger for us in Africa. Like we think like, oh, what are our colonial masters is because they didn't, they didn't have put foundation for us. And this is what they do. And a lot of people in my country say, my grandfather should have went for slavery. That would have been more better. I should have been here suffering. Because like this Western media is painting everything, okay? Like, okay, the black African Americans are good people in some other kind of way, and they are bad people in another kind of way. Like, for me, here, um, I have the problem with somebody that wants somebody to be in the movie that should have acted as a gangster, okay? And the media, you're a black guy, you're a black guy, so you need to act like a gangster in the movie. I was like, no, I can't portray that kind of image because I'm black doesn't mean that I'm uh, I should be a gangster. And here where I stay in Russia, one of the things people like when they see us black people, they always class us like African American. And most black people here, if you say you are from Africa, you, let me say girls who don't girls who won't talk to you, the girls will never have time with you. Because they just see us African in this kind of bad image. Okay? So we have this kind of bad image. Africans out there in Europe everywhere. And if you, if you said you are from America, like black American, you have more friends and you have more people chasing you like they want to get close to you. So we have this kind everybody of wants to be like black, black Americans, except for Africans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. And for us, African, it's been it's painful. You know, we have this kind of grief, you know, bro, like I'm saying, we have this kind of anger. Why I'm saying I'm from Africa and they don't want to accept me. But if I said I'm from, like for me, it was some certain points. I told somebody I'm from Canada and was, she was like, oh, you're from Canada. And they accepted me. Since then I said, no, I will never deny my African for that. You know, so we have this kind of thing that is going on within our race that we need to wipe off and need to settle. If we come as one, as a nation, as, as, a, as, as a race, we forget about our continent and our, where we come from. If you're born in America, England, wherever you were born, you are, an Af you are an African, you have your own African country, and try to practice the language in Africa. Choose one language, learn, and be a strong African. That will help you. Because you, we, we are open-minded people. African, we are open-minded people. A pure African like me, I'm open-minded people. I'm open-minded person. I want to meet everybody. I want to learn everything from everybody. Like, I was learning Kiswahili the last time with my friend, but I couldn't continue. I want to I want to know what is happening in every country in Africa, every tradition and culture. She knows my best friend is from Kenya. But though sometimes we have we have problems within traditions and you know society, we always have this fight between me and him. You know, sometimes he don't agree with me, I don't agree with him. So we have to know that that there is always discrimination. 
and there is always difference in anywhere we live. So that is one of my points I'm making. And coming to the Chinese, to our economy, um, if we don't stand in the next 20 years, we will lose every land in Africa because they are rapidly coming to Africa to, to mine, to do business, and they don't employ us. They employ their own people. And they have this background of like, or oh, when I come to when I come with my people, they will have a job. And when you will try to make, okay, you have we have give you this as a loan. If you don't pay within 10 years, it belongs to us. So you can you can come to my country and build an airport and tell me I should pay within 10 years. If I don't pay within 10 years, it belongs to you. After I've paid like 80%. And when you want to fight, they come with their laws. This is what the law and and our leaders in Africa, they don't read the law. They don't read the law inside the book, like the contract. All what they care is about the money they receive from them. So we, as a young, as a young African, should stand. And with the help of the black, uh, black brothers in everywhere, we should stand as one to fight for the motherland. And if we don't fight for the motherland, we will lose the motherland. And we'll say that the European colonialism in Africa is is not is nothing like what the Chinese are planning for Africa. And they have this they have this kind of bad mind for us and if we don't stand we will lose every damn thing in africa and we will even start to speak chinese so what's the plan what's the plan what's your what's your i mean my brother you in russia right now i know you got some plans like what do you think is one thing we could do to uh stop that from happening what we should what should, should we do okay now we have we have a lot of we have a lot of historical places which the Chinese are taking. Like in my country, they, they have a place like a beach and they start stopping national not to go to that beach. They have restaurants in my country and they said no national should eat in that restaurant. And that was the problem with we and them. Okay, so if we if you guys have any kind of way you can bring investment to the motherland, you invest. And try to build more companies and help the broad and help brothers that are in Africa that are suffering, even to have one meal a day is a problem. So the old world should know that you have to come back and invest in Africa. If you come and invest in Africa, you will they will accept you. The society is open up, our society is open. We are open minded people. Every black brothers, every black sisters, we are open mind. Okay, but don't forget the motherland. Know that the motherland is the motherland. Okay. Okay. So at uh, this point, we should looking for uh, we should be looking at concluding and talking about solutions because it's not just uh, talking talking. And I hope we can realize that we are actually one people. We are actually one people. Just that due to some situations that happened in the past, we happened to land in different continents at the moment. But I know a lot of you who are in this platform know my stand and my opinion about this. So I don't really have to go about it. But I love that I, I can use this platform to educate a lot of people, to also have people coming in to share their opinions so that we can really get to the bottom of this. You know, most often we can just be there. Uh, we can just talk about, oh, we are uniting, 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 you know. Uh, we we love this and we love this. Not we can only talk that for so long. But you know when uh, we cannot leave some people behind. As we're talking about uniting the Africans in the diaspora, we cannot leave other people behind. We all have to get united. You know that we have to get united. We cannot. I cannot be talking about this when our people are feeling they have a different feeling. So that's why I love this platform, and I love all of you who come to this platform. I love how you contribute, sharing your opinions. Those of you who come live, I really appreciate it. Today we had a lot of people wanted to participate, but unfortunately, uh, some people were not able to join. And I had about six questions, but you've just talked about one question. So like I said, that's definitely, it's a definite that you're going to have part two of this. So uh, before we keep, uh, before we carry on talking about all oh, Africans uniting, Africans and the diaspora, we really need to hear, and that's why we have this discussion here today. So uh, maybe you can have Chef 
talk uh before chap talks god's clan of can you hear me unfortunately i think there's something wrong with your audio because all the time you try coming in we can't hear you at all i don't know what that is but uh let's have um let's have a chef talking about uh the solution or what she thinks could be the solution okay so these are uh, just what i have in mind and okay for my brother i don't think you first of all i don't think you're selfish i don't think african americans are selfish um so uh, the first solutions i think we have like our education needs to be reformed our education system needs to be reformed like how we are being taught in school about like even about ourselves about our history and also how far we have, like we can be taught about how we can be taught about like slavery how like, and even the history of african americans i think having that awareness is like is the most important thing because as we have we've, we've said entertainment like is biased and all those and the stereotypes i think it's more about and also traveling which i know sometimes like not everyone is privileged to travel so more is the education system um and for my brothers and sisters the africans and Afri african americans i think also like from from your side also having an understanding from like of africans and all that um another solution is also to promote pan africanism and really advocate for that and as people say empower empower black people for those who already have companies and they're hiring black people do that um also buy black i think that's really important um i always try and do that most of the time is to buy black um really and continue having this conversation i think information having the knowledge will help us do that and all and as i finish i really want to say i hope next time we can just have a topic about land uh i think that's like i would really appreciate to just have a topic about land especially land in africa and communally owned land and what that really means and when we talk about having even our like african americans look coming here and also lands with mm -hmm. people investing and all that and women with land and all that around that i really i would really appreciate to learn like to have that conversation thank you thank you everyone for contributing and i love you all <laughs> yeah. thank you thank jeff you. i really appreciate your time and your contribution yes you're definitely going to have that topic so that you can get the perspective of both africans and what african americans one uh african americans would like to or oh, what African Americans think about it. Thank you, Aaron, for the super chat. Andy, thank you so much for the super chat. Africans in the diaspora, please go to Africa, buy land and start business in Africa before it's too late. We must build Africa for all Africans. And um, or do you want to wait until this cheap beachfront front, beachfront plots of land, farmland, etc. At for the price aaron i think that's agreeing basically to what andy is talking about thank you so much uh we can have um uh, god's clan of unfortunately we can't hear you sheku uh or we can have sheku and then we can have brandon before we end the stream and make sure as you are here you like the streams you can still go ahead you can you like the stream you can still go ahead and support the stream sheku. Uh, uh all right guys it has been a wonderful time. I've learned a lot from you guys for um, the Black African American communities. And I learned a lot from you guys. And um, what I'm saying here, my last word is, uh, you guys need to come home and try to be part of our society because we have um, traditional society back home. Try to learn the culture and try to be like we, Let's be as one. Let's come together as one. And don't forget, you should invest. And don't let them strip more pain from you. Let, let them don't take more pains from you. And be strong as we are back home in the modern land. And let's just try to be as one, okay? So no hatred. Don't let all those, like, spread any hatred news among ourselves, all these kind of things. Let's try to be as one. 
So this, this will be my last word. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Sheku. Uh, Brandon, okay, before Brandon, Chep, I see you come back. You wanted to add something? Chep? Okay, okay. Oh, sorry, I was just, I know, I, I just wanted to listen to everyone say that. that oh, oh, okay, it's okay then. Uh, let's have Brandon uh, finishing up with the conversation. <clears throat> okay. I want to talk about, I just want to say in concluding, there's a, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about forgive and forget, right? Not only must you forgive someone, but you have to forget what they've done to you, which doesn't mean you actually forget it. It just means you have to treat it as if it never happened. You don't even want to call it into mind, and you don't want it to affect you going for, forward, right? Now, what we have to do is we have to forgive each other. Right now, you can make a decision. Psychology and psychiatry is not real. At any moment, you can say, look, I just choose to forgive this person and not let this impact me going forward, period. Also, we just have to forgive each other. And there's a lot of things that we have to forget. A lot of the things we learned growing up or didn't learn, we have to forget about that, right? And we have to do things different. We just have to look at what didn't our parents do for us, right? And when we realize we have to look at what our parents didn't do for us, and we have to do that for our, our generations that are coming up. When I was young, growing up in America, my parents taught me that everything African was evil and bad. They taught me that it was all spiritism, demonism, and all this stuff. They literally taught me that who I was was something bad in, in exchange for some Eurocentric religious garbage. I have to look at what happened to me and make sure I don't do it to the ones that I'm raising. I have to teach them to love who they are and love Africa and African people. The African in the continent, you grew up one way. Your, your elders taught you something. Your parents taught you something. But if you stand in your country right now, you see the result of what you were taught and how it actually hurts you to a great extent. And it's not the culture that was bad. It's just that the people who were hypocritical, who told you that culture was everything, but in the end of the day, they sacrificed culture and tradition in exchange for money and shiny things. So you, we all have to look back at what, what we uh, benefited from and what, we failed, what failed us. And we have to make sure we don't repeat the same thing going forward with our children. The Africans in Africa, the traditions are good, but the traditions are only as good as the values. And if the values descend into the pit of being more concerned about money and personal gain than culture and tradition, then the values are no good. And the African American, if your values descend so low, that you actually have animosity towards your own brothers on the continent, or you see you don't see the value of their brotherhood and kinship, then those values are no good. We have to reject the things that hurt us and take us into to, to, uh, that felt that make us fail. And we need to embrace the mindset that's going to deliver us from all of these uh, calamities that we have suffered so far. So don't be afraid to let go. Of, of, of false misinformation and lazy, uh, uh, inaccurate teachings. Embrace the things that are benefiting us and coming together as one is benefiting us. And we see that on this panel. I mean, everyone, no one who watched this can honestly leave and keep on keeping and keep on holding on to the mindset that African Americans hate Africans and Africans hate African Americans. That has been firmly proven to be false in this discussion panel. So if you hold on to that mindset, that means you're a fool because you reject correction. And the Bible says the man who rejects correction is a fool. So don't be a fool. Peace. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Oh. Um, 
Okay, go ahead. Tigers. Yes. Tigers, we're trying to, we're, uh, me and Cassie and you, we're going to try to put together a trip to go to Kenya at, either at the end of this year or the very beginning of next year. Sure, sure. We really need to do that so as, you know, so that people. But in a, wait, wait, wait. But an affordable trip. Not one of these coon trips where they try to charge you six hundred, six thousand dollars and seven thousand and four thousand dollars. Talk about we gonna feed you. We're trying to get everybody on this trip for about a thousand, less than a thousand, for less than a thousand dollars. Uh, we're trying to do less than a thousand dollars, but somewhere within the price range of twelve, uh, eight hundred to fourteen hundred per person. So very, very, very cheap. Sure, sure. We can, of course, we can talk about that. We can plan about that before we can invite people, get the deals, good deals, whereby, uh, like, the main, the main aim should be, like, people learning and not even about uh, making profit. I mean, that's, that's, that's the main, like, I'm so passionate about this, and I love, I love this. I just love that we are actually bridging the gap, and I love how we are getting to learn from each other. So I'm um, sure we'll do that. So let's have Cassidra, and then we'll conclude, and then I'll conclude the stream. Thank you, Tigris. I think um, Brandon was correct. I love what he says. And everybody had a lot of great ideas. And I want people to think about what uh, Brandon just mentioned about the trip. I think it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is. I think it's time for us to go and see what uh, white supremacists has, has been trying to keep us from. I think it's time for us to come together. And I think it's time for us to meet each other in person and get to love on each other. I think that's what's needed. I think that's the only way for us to um, get rid of the lies that's been told to both of us on both sides. And whoever is willing, start saving your money. You got $1,200, start saving your money so that we can do this, make this trip happen. I think it's gonna be interesting. Um, it's gonna be just a plain old sightseeing, something really cool to, to, to get to know each other. And that's what we need. We can talk all day long face, you know, on the, on the computer, but we need to come face to face and love on each other. And it's going to be like a healing trip. I think, is there some, some resorts or something there that we can go to? You know, a place by the water where we can heal. It's time for us to come together and to enjoy each other's company and to get to know each other. So all of the lies, we can put it to rest. So when other we hear other African-Americans coming and saying different things about our African brothers, we can squash it and vice versa. And the only way we can do that is for us to come to get to know each other. So I think it's that time and that time is now. As soon as all this stuff is over with, let's plan that trip and let's make it happen. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Cassidra. I really uh, appreciate your contribution. Che, Brandon, everybody who's been in the stream, um, everybody who's been in the stream i really appreciate you thanks to everybody who contributed uh thanks to i i, I can see some people have, actually i have not checked but i can see somebody has already supported via paypal i've seen a notification thank you so much i really appreciate go ahead um i know brandon has a channel pan-africanism strikes back check out his channel African Tech Grace, let us know when we can meet with some of the brothers and sisters in Kenya next year. I'll definitely organize something. Next year, after we are done with this corona mess, I'm definitely going to organize something for those who would be interested to visit. As someone says, you need to make profit. That's why African businesses don't thrive. Um, sure, we can make profit, but we not exorbitant like six thousand dollars for a three day trip, which doesn't, which doesn't, which is quite high. So it just even if it, if it, even if there's profit, it uh, it doesn't have to be something really exorbitant that would keep many people uh, away from visiting or away from joining. It should be something manageable. So start saving. Start saving that uh, stimulus check. Start saving your stimulus check and stuff like that so that you can join us next year or later this year when you'll be having that, that trip. Thank you so much to everybody who's been part of this stream. I really enjoyed it. Uh, share it out. I'm very sure we are going to have part two of this. Like I said, I had about six, seven questions listed, but I think... Uh, 
we've only addressed one question, so we are going to have part two of this. You know what? We really need to heal. And then just go ahead, share out my videos, uh, like my videos whenever you're watching them. I mean, it's one of the ways that you can support my platform or you can support the work that I do. And yeah, Asanteni Sana, see you tomorrow. And let me just finish by sharing a link to my Patreon. Go ahead support my patreon uh copy yep i just sh just sharing the link um yes i just shared the link support me on patreon you can click on that link to also support me on paypal i think so too the language barrier i think uh if you come to kenya you can't i'm waiting for this topic i don't want to miss out if you come to kenya you won't face as much um as much language barrier because i think a lot of people speak english but you should also take a uh, step towards learning the one or two words of the local languages i know a number of people who've, who've been here once or twice and have actually taken it upon themselves to learn one or two things so support my channel and see you tomorrow for harry and have a lovely morning evening daytime night wherever you are Good night. Good night.